do so very well and then Kenny and Jesse give you that extra dimension they are big enough and strong enough they're like an extra linebacker out on the field we better change the adjective from warm to hot because that's what it is in Atlanta. The temperature approaching 100 degrees, even hotter than that down on the field. How hot is it? Well, staying cool for us this afternoon. On the sidelines, let's go to Mike Hogwood. Mike? Yeah, that's easy for you to say, John. It's going to be tough for anybody to stay cool today. It's going to be a big story throughout this football game for both NC State and Georgia Tech. State has not practiced on an artificial turf. They're going to feel a lot of heat this afternoon. Now, earlier today, we recorded the temperature and watched it climb up. And I mean, it climbed. At one time, in the space of 30 minutes, earlier this morning, the temperature went up some 4 degrees. Now, I have a temperature gauge in my hand now, and you'll see that it is over 100 degrees. Over well, almost 110 down here on the field right now. Yes, it is indeed going to be one hot football game on the bench and on the field. From Red Hot Atlanta, we'll have more pregame activities in just a moment. We are getting set for kickoff here at Bobby Dodd Stadium, Grant Field in Atlanta. For North Carolina State, since the spring, there have been a lot of changes. They were expecting to have some key elements of a team that started 6-0 back. But you toss in Scott Adele to those who are not back. Williams, Barber, Borders, who are big factors and could have been again this year. That has meant for Coach Dick Sheridan and the Wolfpack a lot of changes prior to the start of the 1990 season. So we have uh, had a number of losses and more than I've ever experienced uh, uh, as far as people that we're counting on uh, that we don't have uh, in our lineup now. But uh, our players have responded to that adversity in a very positive way. For Bobby Ross in the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, they ended a long losing streak in the ACC last year. They won their final six in a row at home, won seven out of their final eight games. Yes, indeed, Georgia Tech has high expectations in 1990. One of the things that we've tried to do is we went through some tough times a couple of years there, and, and uh, we struggled. I, I'm glad to see the expectation level within our squad to be higher. Uh, I think that's good. It's positive. But uh, I think this, that we are a mature enough football team to realize this, that 1989 is behind us, good or bad, and 1990 starts, and, and it's time for us to play a football game. We are about ready for kickoff. It's Georgia Tech and NC State from Red Hot Atlanta. We'll have it for you right after this. We are set for kickoff here in Atlanta. North Carolina State and Georgia Tech opened the season against each other last year. And the Wolfpack off of that 6-0 start a year ago, 1 by 10, 38-28. But had it not been Jack for some turnovers, Tech was right in that ball game. That was a great football game last year. It was our first chance to look at Sean Jones as the quarterback for Georgia Tech. He went on to become the ACC Rookie of the Year last year. There's a freshman, Jason McGill, a true freshman, back to receive the opening kickoff from Toby Simon. Simons will be doing the kicking off. The Wolfpack actually won the toss. They deferred their option until the second half. And we are underway. The ball is fielded at the 19-yard line. Across the 25, near the 27, is Angelo Rush. He was one of the up men on the kick-receiving team. Let's check out the starting lineup for the Yellow Jackets. There is Sean Jones, the Rookie of the Year quarterback. Bell and Scott will be the running backs. Merchant and Rodriguez, part of a multi-talented wide-receiving group. It's Jenkins, Lavin, Chubb, Cyprian, all ACC preseason choice at guard. Mooney and Covington will open at tight end. And that is a giant offensive line in front of Sean Jones. At the 28-yard line, Sean Jones, the ACC Rookie of the Year. They'll operate out of the I formation. Bell is the tailback. Scotton is the fullback. Loose football on the first play from scrimmage and a turnover. And that is what plagued Tech a year ago. They turned it over six times in falling to the Wolfpack. And on the very first play, Bell never really had a handle on it, and he lost it. Mark Thomas came up with the football for NC State. They've always been an opportunistic defense in the Dick Sheridan era. William Bell, the sophomore, just botched the handoff from Sean Jones. He was going to get a lot of company as he came to the line of scrimmage. Big break for the Wolfpack early in the football game. So the loose football is pounced on by the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. They will set it up first down and 10 at the 27-yard line. Davenport with some play action. Sets, looks to his tight end, gets away from one man. Down he goes. Actually almost twisted his helmet off his head. 
Jeremiah McClary just reached up with a big right hand and twisted his helmet off. Marco Coleman actually, 95 rather than 96. The best pass rusher that Georgia Tech has, the outside linebacker, Davenport sees him too late. And it was just, well, that's why he went down. The helmet was twisted so he couldn't see. Unless he was going to look out the little ear hole, he had no place to go but down. He loses five yards on the play. Maynard, the fullback. Jackson, the other running back. Lawrence and Jurgens are the wide receivers. And the handoff goes to Jackson. Some room as he dances inside the 20, down near the 23-yard line. Swillings and Jarrell Williams there to make the tackle. It'll be Davenport, a quarterback, with Jackson and Maynard, the running backs. Bird and Jurgens will open. They'll alternate the wide receivers, bringing in plays. Along the line, it's G. Holly Cobb, Pokrant, Parrish, and Harrison will start at tight end. Rich Pokrant was a second-team all-conference performer at right guard last year for Dick Sheridan. Went a little different than what he normally does, John. He ran out of a split-back formation and ran the ball. Usually the Wolfpack will throw out of that set. It is third down and six. The ball sets at the 23-yard line. An early opportunity for North Carolina State following the turnover. They set up the screen play. The pass is complete. First down. That's Aubrey Shaw, who had 130 yards rushing last week in that lopsided win over Western Carolina, catching the pass and picking up a first down. The Georgia Tech defense, a little young on the front line, although Kevin Battle and Jeremiah McClary have played before. Rudolph is an ex-linebacker. Good linebacking group headed up by Jarrell Williams and Marco Coleman, and an outstanding secondary led by the All-American Ken Swilling. Two tight ends in this formation. Reggie Lawrence is the lone receiver, and it's straight ahead running by the fullback, Greg Maynard. Maynard picked up a yard, maybe two, and that's all. The philosophy for Georgia Tech right now is you made a mistake on your first possession of the football game. You gave the opposition great field position. You want to come out of here with a maximum of three points. If they end up just kicking a field goal, you've done your job. They don't want the touchdown early on and put them in a hole. A gain of two, second down and eight. The ball is near the 12-yard line. Still a double tight end formation, and there is movement on the right side. It is Kirk Parrish who moved on the right side. That's going to set the Wolfpack back five. Well, one of the things that NC State wants to avoid doing is you see Parrish there in the left of your screen come off early. They don't want to put themselves into long yardage situations too frequently because you allow a gambling Georgia Tech defense to get into their gambling mode. You want to put the defense back on its heels playing a base setup. Lone wide receivers, Jurgens to the right. They stay in the two tight end formation. Maynard and Jackson in the eye. Second and 13. Maynard on the pitch to Jackson trying to get outside. Dancing down the sidelines, forced out of bounds by Curly Day. Back to about the 12. It'll be third and still about eight. Good play fake there by Charles Davenport on the lead action with Greg Maynard. Then he pitched it out to Tyrone Jackson, who has got good speed. But when you run the toss into the short side of the field, John, you've got to really hope the defense has taken the fake. Otherwise, it's just not enough room, and that's what happened to Jackson. Aubrey Shaw comes in at tailback. They bring in an extra wide receiver now. They move Shaw to the wing on the right side. Maynard is the lone setback, and in the passing formation, quarterback draw. Upended and losing the football at the seven-yard line. Did they blow it dead? Yes, they did. Calvin Tiggle and Marcus Coleman teamed up to make the tackle, and they really nailed him. It'll be short of a first down, and they will have to go for the field goal. Pretty good play call here by NC State. But you see Coleman come flying over as well as Calvin Tiggle. Good pursuit forces the field goal try. I like the play call, though. Hartman will kick 84 points. Hartman able to hit 19 of 28 field goals last year. His longest was 47. This one will be a 24-yard attempt. And it is good. So the turnover nets three for Dick Sheridan and the Wolfpack. They jump ahead of Georgia Tech here in Atlanta. 3-0. We'll be back. 
A turnover gave the Wolfpack the ball at the 27-yard line, and Jack, all they got was three. That could be a big plus for the Yellow Jackets. Well, you always want to take points, so NC State is happy that they have the lead, but Georgia Tech can feel better knowing that they're not down in a bigger hole. Easier to overcome that field goal. You're right. Jason McGill did not feel the, feel the kickoff, the opening kickoff of the game, and on the very first play from scrimmage, a fumble. This one is going to skip to him. He feels it at the 11-yard line. 20, 25. It's away from one tackler as he crosses the 30 to the 31-yard line before he's brought down by Mike Nichols. It'll be first down 10 at the 31. Let's see if the jitters are gone and they can handle the, the play from scrimmage. Let's set that NC State defense. We didn't get a chance. They're only out there for a play. They have some experience on the front line with Ricky Logo and Mike Jones. Leonard Bartlett, a new player. Good experience at linebacker. Corey Edmond has moved to the outside. And a great secondary. We perhaps have the two best secondaries in the conference matched up here this afternoon. One long setback. They brought in Covington, the tight end. He's the H-back. They start him in motion. Normally they follow him as the blocker. They will try to do that at the 35 and diving across the 35 yard line. It is William Bell. And William's got to feel a little better because he handled the ball cleanly that time. Well, that shows good confidence on the part of Bobby Ross and his offensive coaches as well. Had the young man make a turnover on the first play of the game. He go right back to him, get his confidence back up. T.J. Edwards was scheduled to be the starter, but he's had some hamstring problems, some leg problems. Some publications kicking him as a preseason all-ACC running back, but William Bell, the sophomore from Miami, getting a chance to pass behind the receiver and out of bounds it goes. That's the lateral. It was intended for Rodriguez, and it'll go back inside the 30-yard line to the 27. Well, they tried to run a gadget play, and they ran it right into an NC State stunt. Sean Jones turned around and said, oh my, and his pass, since it went backwards, is a lateral behind the line of scrimmage, and so the ball was marked where it went out of bounds. Intended for Bobby Rodriguez, who caught 18 balls a year ago. This is the opening game for Bobby Ross and Georgia Tech, second year in a row that they have opened against NC State. They have won six straight at home. They got Campbell up close. Watch for the stunt here. Changing at the line of scrimmage is Sean Jones. The backs shift a bit. Jones sets. Gets away from pressure, but he's tripped up at the 25-yard line. Leonard Bartlett got a hand on him and brought him down. Well, when NC State saw the change at the line of scrimmage by Sean Jones, they went into a pretty basic set. Jones did not have anybody open downfield, and Bartlett got just enough of his ankle to trip him up for his first sack of the year. They talked about Bartlett having quick feet. He showed it there. Scott Aldridge, who had his longest kick of the year against NC State last year, a 58-yarder in 89, just under a 40-yard average. He'll be kicking to Liddell George, number 16. George is standing at his own 30. Great, great kick. Back at the 23-yard line. George in the center of the field. Now starts to the right side. And he's brought down short of the 40 at the 39-yard line by Ken Swilling. Great punt by Aldridge, except he actually outkicked his coverage. The 52-yard punt with a net punt of 36 yards because George returned it 16. A great punt of 52 yards, a good return, 10 minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Following a turnover, NC State has the early lead. Charles Davenport brings him up. The redshirt junior from Fayetteville, North Carolina. First down 10 at his own 39-yard line. Big, big hit by Calvin Tiggle on Tyrone Jackson. They had a great linebacker here a year ago by the name of Eric Thomas, who was an all-conference performer. Calvin Tiggle didn't get to play as much because of Eric. He's playing now, and he said, how do you do to Tyrone Jackson? Boy, did he ever. The senior from Fort Washington, Maryland. A junior college transfer, and he made a big, big hit that time. Second down, seven. Ball at the 42-yard line. Out of the eye. Maynard and Jackson, the running backs. This is Jackson on the pitch. 45, near the 48-yard line. Thomas Balcom brought him down. Balcom, number 43, and again you see Ken swilling around the ball. He seems to get everywhere the football is. Charles Davenport 
is the kind of quarterback that Dick Sheridan likes to work with, the option quarterback who can threaten you on the corners. Last year, Shane Montgomery was much more effective as a dropback quarterback, and so the Wolfpack adjusted their offense to fit his talents. But with Davenport, you can do a lot of different things. Third and short, they go to the two tight ends and bring in the power back, the power formation. Going to be very close. Kevin Battle was right there to meet Aubrey Shaw. I don't know if he got it. It'll depend on the spot. It's going to be close, Jack. They are setting the ball down just past the 49-yard line, and it looks like it's a first down. But C.C. Daly, the referee, says, well, let's bring the chains out just to make sure. The rest of the crew, Mark Gaston from Greenville, John Gottbold, Rick Patterson, Mark Kane, Sterling Allen, John Hunt, and Billy Smith, the officials for this afternoon. And the one you will hear the most is C.C. Daly. He's the referee, and it is a first down. Well, my first guess of 1990, and I was right on the bus. That's right. You didn't have any tough calls last week. No, that's right. No, you're putting the pressure on me now, John. Well, this is what NC State wants to do be a lot more relentless this year last year they give you a, a lot more of a vertical offense this year they want to pound you a little bit second possession of the game the first possession started at the 27 of georgia tech and wound up in a wolfpack field goal davenport now and again there's movement on the right side the tight end harrison moving odd harrison economics major and he was a little anxious that time. I didn't have the numbers right no, for the didn't. economics major. Dead ball, illegal procedure on the offensive team. First down, first and 15. Some of that could be the fall of the quarterback. You might have noticed in that shot, he changed his cadence and dipped his head a little bit. He's trying to draw the defense offside. Instead, he drew his teammates the wrong way. It is a first and 15. tried to turn it up by the outside linebacker Marco Coleman, a redshirt sophomore from Dayton, and Coleman was right there. Well, that is a big play, gentlemen, right there. From the back side, watch the speed of Marco Coleman come out of the right side of your screen, and Davenport had no clue that Coleman was coming. That's the second time that Marco Coleman's had pretty much a blind shot on Charles Davenport. He was the top hitter in spring practice, and you saw the hit earlier by Calvin Tickle. Those linebackers for Georgia Tech pumped up for the opening game. 1990 season, second and 14. Nowhere to go for Aubrey Shaw. Jeremiah McClary, number 96, leading the way. And this defense for Tech is ready. Well, they are very, very large on the defensive line. McClary, the most experienced of the defensive front, makes the good tackle on Shaw. McClary's 279. Kevin Battle is 295. Coleman Rudolph, well, he's the midget on the front line. He only goes 262. Third down and long yard, it's 16 to go. Passing formation, rolling away from the pressure is Davenport. Fires the ball for a first down. That's inside the 40 down to the 37 yard line. It's Ricky Turner, who started out as a tailback, but Turner making the big catch, and Jack, he was positioned perfectly to get the yardage. Well, this play is made by Davenport. Once he eludes the pressure, now you've got the defense at a disadvantage because they're not sure where he's going. And when the play is broken down as a receiver, your job is to get yourself into a hole. And Turner did an outstanding job right there. Picked up 20 yards on that play. The ball is down to the 37-yard line of Georgia Tech. Jackson. Loose football. Georgia Tech is there. Looks like Calvin Tiggle at the bottom of the pile. They're digging for it, but the officials have already signaled a yellow jacket ball. Might be Williams down there battling for the football. Well, Tickle gets up, and you're right on the bottom of the pile. Marlon Williams with the turnover. Georgia Tech evens things up in the turnover category. 6.46 remaining first quarter. A break for Tech, and they take advantage. We'll find out. First, a word from your local station. Procedure, NC State. 
We are back, 5.57 to play. We were unable to get the officials to stop play, and we had another turnover in the interim. Bell lost the football for the second time today. Watch as he cuts back, Jack, but boom, here it comes. Took a pretty good hit and had the ball pop loose, and Joe Johnson recovered it because it was behind the line of scrimmage. He could not advance it, but NC State first and 15. An illegal procedure penalty setting up the first and 15. Fake to Shaw, a lot of time down the middle, going deep, two defenders back there for Tech, and it looks like an interception for Kim Swilling in the end zone. They really had sandwiched the receiver Lawrence on the play, and Swilling goes up and brings it down. Well, that's why he's an All-American. He is perhaps the biggest safety in the ACC at about 235 pounds, but he can still move and playing center field back there. Davenport trying to get the home run ball, and look at Swilling just play center field and take the football away from Reggie Lawrence. So we keep trading turnovers. Both clubs have now turned the ball over two times already, and we still have 548 to play in the first quarter. That's the first interception of the game. We've had three other fumbles, the ball at the 20-yard line, the turnovers, as Jack mentioned, are even at two apiece. Rodriguez and Merchant are the wide receivers. That's Covington, the tight end, who will be in motion. Great drop this time for Jones. Looks left, throws left. The pass is cut. Rodriguez still on his feet at the 39-yard line. Bobby Rodriguez tackled by Sebastian Savage, but Rodriguez, who caught 18, gets his first today. Down we go to Mike Hogwood. Mike? Guys, one thing that might be a key for Georgia Tech today, they've had a lot of turnovers, problems getting things clicking. T.J. Edwards wasn't expected to play today. He's worked real hard here on the sidelines to get loose. He just went in the ball game, so watch out for number 39. He's ready to play and is hoping to change things around for Georgia Tech. Edwards is in the lineup. The backs are split. Scott and Edwards now the split backs behind the quarter back Jones. Edwards to the 44 for a gain of five. And John, that was supposed to be a reverse, but the veteran Edwards seeing that Rodriguez was going to be in trouble on the reverse because Leonard Bartlett, number 94 here, had smelled it out, holds on to the football and gets positive yardage out of a play that looked like it was going to be thrown for a loss. Billy Ray Haynes on the stop for the Wolfpack. T.J. Edwards, the backup last year to Jerry Mays, the all-time number two rusher in Tech history. Second down and five. Edwards following his blockers for a first down as he crosses midfield down to the 47-yard line of NC State. Jesse Campbell made the tackle, but Edwards really using his blockers well as he turned up field. Well, they pulled two of their best linemen. Watch the left side of your screen as Daryl Jenkins and Jimmy Lavin, the left guard and tackle, seal off the inside. Edwards finds the sliver in the, se in the secondary and gets the first down. Edwards and Scott will be split back. Barry Pettis is wide receiver. They have three wide receivers in the ball game right now. Falling forward to near the 46-yard line after being hit by Ray Frost. It's Edwards again. Leonard Bartlett there as well defensively for the Wolfpack. Well, the different look you see out of Georgia Tech this year, they were employing the multiple receiver sets last year, but they were pretty much an I-formation team with Jerry Mays. This year they want to get Stephen Scott involved in the offense, more of the fullback, and you're going to see a lot more of the pro set, the split backs behind quarterback Sean Jones. Two wide receivers go to the left. That's Rodriguez and Lester, Merchant to the right, the backs. Scott and Edwards are split. Rodriguez in motion. In and out of his hands and caught by his teammate at the 41-yard line. Lester made the catch behind Rodriguez. Well, there was a mix-up. It was an option round, I think, for both wide receivers on the play. And he was going to Greg Lester, but Bobby Rodriguez turned right into the ball. Unfortunately, he didn't get enough of the ball to, to, to prevent it from getting to Lester. Third down and a long three. Important play call here early in the ball game for Bobby Ross. Just outside the 40-yard line. Lone setback is Edwards. Scott has come off. They're using two tight ends. They back Covington off the line of scrimmage on the right side. He'll be in motion. Sweeping short side. No, it is not there. The Wolfpack stiffening right at the line of scrimmage. Tyler Lawrence, number 58, leading the surge. Well, Tyler Lawrence, a redshirt freshman, had to come into the ball game because on the previous series, Corey Edmond looked like he twisted an ankle or a knee. 
And Lawrence on the short side there did a great job of holding his ground against the sweep. Second punt of the afternoon for Aldridge. His first was 52 yards. Only has 40 yards of field to work with here. Liddell George is the single safety for the Wolfpack. 2.17 to play in the first quarter. Four turnovers and only three points on the board so far. The ball was touched back at the four-yard line by Georgia Tech on the way down. Stacy Parker got a hand on it. The ball will be spotted outside the five at the six. Exactly two minutes remaining in the first quarter. NC State leads 3-0. More football coming up from Atlanta. We are back. The ball was touched by Tech at the five-yard line, but they did not have possession. Thus, it comes out to the 20. It'll be first down and 10. NC State's fourth possession of the first quarter. We're at the two-minute mark. Each team, Jack, has had it four times, and two of those times, they've turned the ball back to the opposition. So nobody can get a handle on this one so far. Neither Dick Sheridan nor Bobby Ross. A reminder that at the conclusion of today's game, we will be selecting a Schick most valuable player from each team. Maybe it'll be the guy that recovers the most fumbles the way it's going so far. Well, and certainly the heat is going to be an increasing toll as the game goes on. Both teams will be forced to use a lot of people. When you don't have your concentration level, that's where the mistakes come about, John. We've seen it already. Shaw is the tailback, and Chris Cotton, a redshirt freshman from Greensboro, is the fullback at the 20. It's first down 10 for the Wolfpack in white. Cotton's got five. He's got a first down. Ken Swilling made the tackle. Let's go to Mike Hogwood. Mike? Guys, you guys were talking about the heat. 118 degrees now, as you see the fan on the Georgia Tech bench. On the state bench, they don't have a fan. Also here on the Georgia Tech bench, they have a couple of air conditioners. These things are blowing cold air out, and the players who are not in the game trying to get cool as they come off, but it's awfully tough to do it. It's like you said, that heat has had something to do with the inordinate amount of turnovers we've had here early in this football game. Thank you, Mike. Cotton picking up 11 on his first carry. Shaw, nowhere. Right at the line of scrimmage, he is dropped on the play. Marco Coleman there, along with Eric Fry. Fry, one of the backup linebackers on the inside, and also Marco Coleman. Well, they ran a stunt right into where the play was, and Chris Cotton, who was trying to be the lead blocker on the play, instead got a face full of Jeremiah McClary, and that allowed number 95 there, Marco Coleman, to have a free shot on Aubrey Shaw. And it makes it second down and 10 at the 31-yard line. A minute and three seconds remaining. Opening quarter, State with the ball and a three-point lead as Charles Davenport, who's gone all the way so far, changes the play at the line of scrimmage. Shaw for about three yards to near the 34-yard line. Jeremiah McClary once again right there, along with Coleman Rudolph through the down lineman. Well, that was a checkoff on Davenport's part because Marlon Williams on the wide side of the field showed a blitz, and I think that's where NC State wanted to go. Instead, he went with the handoff to the short side, and Rudolph, the sophomore out of a great high school program at Valdosta High School right here in Georgia, was there to lead the way. Talk about great football. It's hard to find it much better than Valdosta High School. That is correct. Jurgens and Turner are the wide receivers. Straight back is Davenport, and down he goes. With Rudolph, 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 yeah, he was coming again. Well, Davenport got a, an idea of the quick feet there of Rudolph. He was a linebacker, but the Tech defensive coaches said he was just getting too big to remain a linebacker. When a guy gets to 260, 265, you got to put him someplace else. He's doing the job on the defensive front wall. And the punt, which will come, will go the other way because we have reached the end of the first quarter. NC State 3, Georgia Tech nothing. Back with the second quarter from Atlanta after this. We are back to Atlanta. Tom Muse is getting set to kick. That may not stay that way the entire game. They have Preston Pogue as well. That's the freshman. Jason McGill standing at his own 25-yard line. Good rush. Nice high-hanging kick that will be fielded at the 22-yard line. 
McGill across the 30 to the 31 yard line. A 54 yard punt, a seven yard return. And Neil Auer, a backup tight end down on the coverage. And it's that kind of day for fans, tank tops and shorts here in Atlanta. Don't forget next week we've got the NC State Wolfpack again as they will host at Carter-Finley Stadium, the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest, next Saturday, 12 o'clock, right here on the ACC Football Network, as Jefferson Pilot Sports brings you the best in college football. It's going to be a lot cooler next week, isn't it? Well, we hope so. 14.48 <laughs> to play in the first half. Rodriguez in motion. Back is Jones, looking left, throwing. The ball is incomplete. In and out of the hands of number 25, Greg Lester, a redshirt junior from Decatur. For Georgia Tech, they saw NC State have the ball for better than nine minutes of the first quarter. The offense, not a lot of time out on the field because they were turning the ball over. A couple of fumbles along the way. Trying to get something sustained. Here's the advantage of playing in the previous week, John. For Georgia Tech, they're still trying to get comfortable. That first quarter is gone. Let's see how they are here in the second period. They're a little more settled on offense. It's second down and ten. Tight end Covington shifting from the right to the left. Option play. Edwards slides down at the 29-yard line. Jesse Campbell. He went down because of the leg. The hamstring, yeah, I think, I think right. went out on him again because Jesse didn't really have that much of T.J. Edwards. Watch the play. Gets blocked here. Bounces back up. And you can see he's got him by the jersey, but not much else. He was not making the tackle. Edwards went down and immediately went off the field, and they are working on his left leg again on the Georgia Tech bench. There he is. He just simply was unable to turn, put the pressure on that leg that he needed to turn up field. Bell takes his place. Jones pass, batted away. Intended for Greg Lester, but right there with Jesse Campbell to knock it away. It will be fourth down and another punt coming up for Tech. Well, when you allow NC State with their defense to be in second and long or third and long situations, you are really up against it because they've got a veteran secondary and an aggressive front seven. That's why Georgia Tech's punting the football again. Liddell George back. It'll be the third punt on this very hot autumn afternoon in Atlanta for Aldridge. George is standing back at his 30-yard line. Another great high kick. George, glancing at the sun, fields it at his 23-yard line. It's away from the one tackler. Now moves outside, but he can't get back across the 25-yard line. Hitting him there is Marlon Williams, number 56, who stayed in his lane and made the tackle. Let's go down to Mike Hogwood. Boy, the injuries are starting to mount for NC State at linebacker. Number 50, Billy Ray Haynes is out. He has a hit pointer. They're going to try to construct a pad so he can play in a few series. But Corey Edmonds, he's got ice on the knee. He won't play at, at earliest. It'll be second half before he'll be able to get back in there. And, of course, if you're Tech, you worry about the fact that he could be out a lot longer than that. First and 10. Ball at the 24-yard line. Davenport. Fires, hits his man, spinning across the 30 to the 32-yard line is, uh, is Aubrey Shaw. Tiggle was there to make the tackle. Shaw had been set up on the slot on the left side, and he makes the pass catch and the short game. NC State made a living against Georgia Tech last year, particularly in the second half, running that little five- or six-yard curl route with a back out of the backfield. Chris Williams, who's probably going to be redshirted this year, had a career afternoon against the Yellow Jackets. That's the fullback cut, falling very close to a first down. Really needs to get up to the 35-yard line. Jeremiah McClary made the tackle, but Chris Cotton, the fullback, has the first down. NC State is without Dan Hayden, who was expected to be the starting fullback this year. Hayden 
with a stomach, some kind of intestinal disorder that forces him to, or causes him to lose a lot of weight. And when you're a fullback in an I formation setup, you can't afford to be dropping 10 or 20 pounds very quickly. So they were concerned about the fullback spot, but Maynard and Cotton have done a pretty good job in the first five quarters of football. First and 10 at their own 34-yard line. Davenport sprinting back, sets, looks back to the left side and overthrows the intended receiver, the tight end Alex Nicholson. The redshirt junior from Athens, Georgia, just too tall for him. He's 6'6", 230. I like the concept of that play. They ran all the backfield action to the right and took the wide receiver on the right side and the tight end, Reggie Lawrence and Nicholson, and ran them against the green. And actually, both of them were all open. Davenport just overshot the mark. Reggie Lawrence in motion. Option play, spinning forward near the 37-yard line. Darrell Schwilling made the tackle on the quarterback, Charles Davenport. To be a good option quarterback, you have to be able to play fake well, and we have seen glimpses already in this ball game that Davenport can put a lot of pressure on the perimeter of a defense with his play faking ability and then pulling the ball back out from the fullback and challenging the corner. Charles was redshirted last year. He waited in the wings for his chance to be the team quarterback. He said it was strictly a learning experience last year, and he expects the game action to be a continuation of that process. As he said, watching is one thing, doing it is another. The ball is incomplete, batted away, intended for Nicholson to tie it in. He had all kinds of coverage with him. Good coverage indeed that time by the Georgia Tech linebacker. Actually, a strong safety, Jay Martin, came into the ball game and made the play and forces another punt. On a hot day, John, either you get all kinds of points or just what we're seeing thus far. A lot of head banging and not many points. Not a lot of progress offensively up and down the field for either team so far. McGill is deep again and Muse is back to punt. His first was 54 yards. Another good one. Kickers seem to be enjoying the heat. At the 10, McGill. It's away from one man, trying to get back outside. A flag goes down at the 13-yard line. He's dropped on the play. Keith Johnson on the kickoff team, following the 52-yard punt that will check the flag. I'm sure it's some kind of illegal block on the part of the return team. This will back up Tech inside their 10-yard line flag down at about the 12 or 13 and you saw C.C. Daly indicate a clip against the Yellow Jackets. Go, Tech, go! Go, Tech, go! Bobby Ross and his ball club, they've not enjoyed very good field position for most of this first half. Clipping on return, first down and 10. Not good field position indeed. The ball is at the seven yard line and that's where the Yellow Jackets will have it when we come back to Atlanta. 11.25 remaining first half, state leads three nothing. Deep in their own territory, Tech down by a field goal with 11.25 to play in the first half along with Mike Hogwood who's very cool and dry we're sure down on the field. Up here, Jack Corrigan and I'm John Sanders. We've got first and ten for Tech at their own seven. Georgia Tech the last team to start in the ACC. They had the same number of practices so they started their preseason drills later than the other schools. Bobby Ross told me yesterday, yeah, he'd rather have a non-conference game to get ready. Does not have that luxury. Loose football again. This one is picked up and goes into the end zone for the touchdown. Fernandez Vinson, they call him Snake, and he snaked that one up and took it into the end zone for a touchdown. And under the new rules, when you go across that neutral zone, across the line of scrimmage, the ball can be returned by the defense. It was. Snake Vinson had a great ball game against Georgia Tech last year. He spots the loose football as it popped away from Stephen Scotton. And the ball had crossed the line of scrimmage, and that made the defense eligible to return it. And Vincent has the first touchdown of the afternoon. And it is scored by the defense, and that's our first example of that new rule. Damon Hartman on to attempt the extra point. Hartman 27 of 28 last year, and one of one 
here today. So Hartman bangs through the extra point, and that three-point lead is turned into a ten-point lead. Let's go back one more time and watch the fumble and the ensuing touchdown for the NC State defense. Well, Vince in the free safety, shadowing the play, and let's see who made the contact. It was David Merritt, a sophomore who popped the ball loose from Stephen Scotton. And Mr. Savage, they are making Mr. Vincent, Snake Vincent, comes away with the football and the touchdown. Third turnover of the afternoon for Georgia Tech. Two of them have resulted in the NC State scores. Now this series between these two clubs has created big plays like that one. You can see some of the numbers, of course, Last year, Kenny Swilling went 95 yards with an interception, and Jesse Campbell went 64 the year before. But the advantage right now to the team in white, the NC State Wolfpack, with a 10 to nothing lead, and it enables them, John Sanders, to stay even more in their pounded away option mode on offense, and it forces Bobby Ross to probably spread his offense even more and throw the ball more. McGill is the deep man, and this time Jason has driven into the end zone. The ball is over his head and out of the end zone. So a great kickoff for Toby Simons. The ball will come to the 20. Tech looking to make something happen, but they've really got the first game jitter so far. Well, I, I'm sure that Bobby Ross did not want to have T.J. Edwards get hurt in practice with a hamstring problem and then have to put him into the ball game and aggravate the situation. It puts that much more pressure on the quarterback, Sean Jones, because you've got Scott in the fullback who did not carry the ball much last year and William Bell, basically a new player in the tailback spot. Jones is set to go. Shifting is the tight end, Covington, from the left side to the right side. Jones pump fakes, drops it off complete. Down he goes at the 17-yard line, a loss on the play. Ray Frost teaming up that time with Tyler Lawrence. Let's go down to Mike on the sidelines. Well, guys, update on those two state starting linebackers, Edmonds and Haynes, both now officially out for the game. You may notice a different look for Georgia Tech this year. They've got new uniforms. The players have to have their names on the back. They've got them. They've also got black shoes, but uh, I'm not so sure if they don't win that uh, they might not go back to the way they were last year. That's a good point. A quick look at Campbell in the secondary. This is Scotton. Across the original line of scrimmage, maybe a yard or two more, close to the 22. Leighton Henry made the tackle on the senior from Cleveland, Tennessee, Stephen Scott. Credit Elijah Austin, the nose guard, with making first contact on Scotton as well and slowing down his progress. Otherwise, that play might have gained more yards for Georgia Tech. But again, John, they're still in that same situation. Second and long, third and long. Against a defense like NC State, that is difficult. Jones is three out of five passing for 22 yards. Play action, sets, looks right, throws, ball is cut for a first down at the 40-yard line. David Merchant made the catch, Sebastian Savage was there defensively, but he went high in the air to make the catch at the 40 first down 10. Well, Emmett Merchant with very good speed runs a great deep curl route here on the wide side of the field catching the ball in front of Sebastian Savage mention this is a great secondary but if you're going to pick on somebody Savage is the guy you're going to pick on he's a former safety now trying to play cornerback Merchant caught 18 a year ago including three touchdowns he picks up 18 yards on that play Venice is the man in motion the option play close to a first down flipping forward is Bell Fernandez Vincent spun him forward and he is about a yard away from another first down. Well, they are very hopeful that this young man, William Bell, out of Miami, Florida, is going to be a big-time player for him. He's got 4-5 speed. They like his explosiveness, and that's the first time we've really seen it demonstrated, John. You notice when he squared his shoulders to the line of scrimmage, he put on a burst into the secondary, and that got him the nine yards. Most of last year was spent on the kick team. Looking for the first down, he's got it and more. With room outside, he falls down at the 45-yard line. He was trying to put a move on Joe Johnson and hit the deck. Boy, he got a great block from Greg Lester on the wide side of the field to set up the one-on-one -on -one situation. Watch the left side of your screen as Bell cuts back. 
right there, Lester with the good block, Johnson was the only man left. And the youngster will learn that against Joe Johnson, you're better off just running right at him and hope you can knock him down because you can make all the fakes in the world, you're not going to fake out Joe Johnson. 45 yard line, first down, 10. the 31 yard line by Emmett Merchant again. Merchant again going up in the air to make the catch and again he had Sebastian Savage on him defensively. Well not to take anything away from Sebastian Savage because he is a, a good athlete. Good scheme here with the play action right and then coming back left to throw the ball. But Joe Jansen on the other side much like Willie Clay for Georgia Tech they're almost like Willie Brown the Hall of Famer from the Raiders. They're so good you just don't throw that way so you rarely call their name John. You won't call Joe Johnson's name too often, or Willie Clay's this afternoon. They just cover you so well, you go the other way. Jones is five out of seven, 54 yards in the game. He's hit his last two, and his team has marched to the 32, a first down and 10. At the 25, slicing across the 25 is Bell. Savage came up to make the hit, but he got it inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. A little inside trap, the right guard, Joe Sipri, who is an all-ACC preseason choice, a four-year starter for Bobby Ross, had a great trap block on Elijah Austin. And Bell might be a bit winded or hurting a bit. He's taking a little extra time to catch his breath in that backfield. He's there with Stephen Scott. There's William Bell, the sophomore from Miami, second in short yardage. Jones pass, caught at the 15-yard line. Flag goes down, he gets away from the defenders. Into the end zone he goes. Greg Lester. There's a flag on the play, and I think Joe Johnson is going to be called for grabbing the face mask of Greg Lester. They have waited two years for Greg Lester to get healthy because they know a healthy Greg Lester can make big-time plays like he did right there. A touchdown comes with 7.19 to play. Defensive pass on appearance. The penalties decline. First and goal. First and goal or a touch should be a touchdown because he was in the end zone. CC Daly had a little problem there. Look at Lester. What ability. Sees the end zone. Sees Jesse Campbell coming and says, I got to get there and just cross the plane. It is a touchdown. A 23 yard score to Lester. They challenged Joe Johnson and won that time. A 23-yard touchdown pass. Scott Sisson is set to tack on the extra point, but first we're going to check with the official. Scott hit all 30 of his extra points last year. Now we're ready. is the first long offensive march of the ball game. The drive for the touchdown. They go 80 yards to score. Here's the touchdown pass again. He gets away and into the end zone. It's 10-7. Let's pause now for a word from your local stations. The touchdown makes it a 10-7 NC State lead over Georgia Tech. Let's go down below once again. Here's Mike Hogwood. Mike? Well, guys, as you know, every time Georgia Tech scores a touchdown, there's a tradition here, and that the mascot does push-ups for the number of points scored. Well, it's an awful hot day to do push-ups, but can you imagine a week ago, they do the same thing at NC State, and the state mascot, when they scored 67 points, he flat gave out. He had to turn the duty over to somebody in the stands. It was really rough, but it may be a long day for doing push-ups here if we score a lot of points. But I'm sure he'd like to do a few more points and a few more push-ups. I don't think he wants to end up going out on the field that way. They did mark off the 15 yards, John, for the pass interference, so it's a great opportunity, perhaps for Georgia Tech here, to try and squib the ball down and come up with a loose football. They do squib the ball down. It's fielded at the six-yard line, 20-25 falling forward close to the 30 is Liddell George. George gets it all the way back to the 30-yard line. It was a great drive for Tech and also for Jones. Jones went four for four, 54 yards passing on the drive, a 22-yard return, and at the 30, that's where NC State will have it. 7-11 remaining first half. State is leading by three. It's 10-7. 
Now the NC State offense has not really sustained a drive yet. Their points coming about as a result of turnovers. Davenport straight back, sets. Now he's in trouble and down he goes. Fought his way back to the line of scrimmage in the arms of Kevin Battle, number 98. Good job by the Georgia Tech secondary disguising what looked to be a blitz into actually a deep zone coverage and there just was no one for Charles Davenport to throw to and eventually the protection wore down and Kevin Battle, all 295 pounds of them, found the quarterback. Turner goes to the left, Lawrence to the right. They are the wide receivers. Maynard is the fullback and Aubrey Shaw is now the tailback behind Charles Davenport, second down and 10. Option play, a loss of a yard. Calvin Tickle has been all over the field here in the first half, making the hit there and a loss of one. The strength of this Georgia Tech defense is geared towards the linebackers. They have great athletes in the secondary, so you can do a lot of different things. They have good size up front to contain the offensive line. They expect their linebackers to make a lot of tackles, and Calvin Tickle has not disappointed them this afternoon, as well as Marco Coleman. Jake Gunter has now checked into the lineup for NC State. Aubrey Shaw into the slot on the right side. Third down, 11. The pass to Shaw. Caught at the 35. It's away from a tackler. He's got a first down to 40. Now at midfield. Still on his feet inside the 45 to the 44-yard line. Aubrey Shaw just picking his spots. A big gainer. Jarrell Williams finally made the tackle. A 27-yard gain. I talked about this earlier. NC State made a living with this a year ago. Just a little curl route by the tailback and then let the athletic ability take over. And Aubrey Shaw is a load in the secondary, a 200-pounder built low to the ground. He had Georgia Tech players playing all over the place. They go back to the two tight end formation. Jackson is now the tailback. That's the fullback, Painter. Inside the 40, falls forward to the 37. Jeremiah McClary made the tackle. Now Aubrey Shaw is the guy getting a little bit of attention from the NC State medical staff. Some of it is probably just that fatigue from the heat. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by JP Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express written permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference is prohibited. Second down, about three and a half yards to go. NC State started the drive at their own 30. First down as he falls inside the 30. The ball is down. Marlon Williams there defensively protect, but that's going to be a first down for the Wolfpack. Last series, we saw Georgia Tech with a long drive for a touchdown. Now NC State is trying to do the same thing. One of the reasons for the success here in the latter half of the first half, John, the fatigue affects defenses faster than the offense because you're a chaser, and you have to work harder when you're a chaser. Still two tight ends. Ricky Turner is the lone wide receiver. He's split left. First and ten. The ball is nudged inside the 30 to the 29. Maynard has about five as he fights forward inside the 25 to the 24. Marlon Williams again, the red shirt freshman from Decatur, Georgia, made the tackle. Don't forget, at halftime, we've got our usual J.P. Sports extravaganza around the league. One for the books, our Infinity Student Athlete of the Week, as well as scores and highlights. All that will be game. handled by Mike Hogwood, who's going to towel off and then come back for intermission. He needs an umbrella down there to shield himself from the sun. Reggie Lawrence now, the lone wide receiver, split right. Diving for the first down, coming up about a yard short, is Jackson. Clay and Williams team up to bring him down for Tech. It'll be third and about a yard. And you notice how many more of the tackles now are arm tackles. The, the fatigue setting in and you don't get your body there where you want it to. You may be a half a step slower right now because of the heat affecting you. And you don't get all of that pop that you need to get. And with the line, with the offensive line that NC State has, good size, and the good size out of their backs, makes it tougher on that defense. Three tight ends in the lineup. They go to the power formation. Neil Hours lined up as the extra back. Nothing there for Aubrey Shaw. A swarming Tech defense 
led by number one, Kim Swilling, made the stop. But I tell you who made that play, John, it was Calvin Tiggle again. They were going to run a power lead, and watch Tiggle right here. He just stops the offensive line and the lead back. It forced the cutback move, and that's where the rest of the Yellow Jackets were, led by Ken Swiller. This will be a 38-yard field goal attempt by Hartman. He was good earlier in the ball game from 24. This from 38. Low snap. Kick is up. And the kick is good. So despite the low snap, he got it up and he got it through. NC State is added to its lead with 2.14 to play in the first half. The Wolfpack now lead by six. It's 13-7 over Georgia Tech. Back with more football from Red Hot Atlanta after this. 13-7 is the score with 2.14 to play. NC State is leading Georgia Tech. We're coming off the two best offensive marches so far following the 80-yard touchdown drive for Tech. 10 plays, 48 yards, a 38-yard field goal by Hartman, his second of the game. Four minutes and 57 seconds off the clock, and it's a six-point advantage for NC State. The offenses, as Jack mentioned, in the heat, starting to get things going their way. And this is going to be a day of attrition, John. I think as the second half goes on, we're going to see more mistakes. We're probably going to see more big plays. The heat of factor, about 115 degrees Ooh. down on the field right now. That's reflected heat, but it's still hot. Boy, you're telling me. McGill is deep. The last one went out of the end zone. He'll have a chance to return this one. Backs up, fields it at the goal line. 5-10. A little move as he skips across the 15 near the 17-yard line. So that's not exactly what he wanted, but there wasn't much there at all. Dexter Royal down on the kick team. A 17-yard return, and it'll be first and 10 at the 17. Let's see what Bobby Ross wants to do here. He has got enough time, and he has all three timeouts remaining that he can kind of pick his way up the field. He doesn't have to get it all at once. They were pretty effective working against Sebastian Savage, the cornerback, and they'll be paired up on the top of the screen, Emmett Merchant against Savage. Scott and Bell in the I formation. Fake to Bell. The pass is low and incomplete at the 32-yard line. It was intended for Emmett Merchant, but just a little short that time. Went right back against Sebastian Savage. He had Savage turned around, Merchant did. John Jones, who sometimes overthrows the ball a little bit. Not overthrow in terms of height, but trying to throw it too hard. And his mechanics get a little off kilter. That was a good example of it right there. He just wanted to gun it and didn't have good mechanics. Jones hit all four of his passes on that 80-yard touchdown march. This is his first attempt on this drive. They'll work out of the eye. Jones looks short, now tries to go down the near sideline, intended for Rodriguez, and knocked away by Joe Johnson. Joe Johnson had absolutely perfect coverage, and Bobby Rodriguez, the redshirt sophomore out of Staten Island, New York, almost made a great play. But Johnson kept his hands alive and stripped the ball away from Rodriguez. They burned Joe Johnson for the touchdown. You're not going to do that too often. Rodriguez not able to come up with the grab, and it is third and ten. So a couple of pass plays, and he has not tried to pick his way, Jack. He has tried to do the opposite. Move it through the air. He'll have three wide receivers all split to the near side of the field. Bell moving out in the slot. This is the quarterback draw. Jones falls forward to near the 20-yard line. Tripped up by Mike Jones, number 99, getting Sean Jones. Well, Sean was a little impatient that time. They wanted to run the quarterback draw and clear out the left side with the trio of wide receivers, but he released up the field too quickly, and Mike Jones was able to reach out and slow him down enough to knock him off his feet. And asking for the timeout is NC State with a minute and 37 seconds left. They know they're going to get decent field position and have some time left on the clock here in the first half. Well, that was a factor in the play call of Bobby Ross as well. It was third and ten. He was trying to keep the drive alive, but he wanted to run a play that would keep the clock moving and force NC State to use one of their timeouts. That's what they did, but still lots of time left for the Wolfpack. 
Two timeouts remaining for Dick Sheridan. Let's go down below again. Here's Mike Hogwood. Mike? Well, guys, uh, you've seen several players today, especially in the second quarter, come out of the game apparently maybe for an injury to have something worked on. It's, they're not really coming out for injuries. There's so much perspiration on the part of these players. A lot of the tape is coming loose on their knees and ankles, and they're having to get retaped even before halftime. And so a lot of them are having to come out of the game for that reason. One other problem is some of the equipment managers say that the shoes are starting to maybe come apart a little bit because they're glued and not stitched. So there are a lot of extra shoes down here on the sidelines as well for some of these players who are having some shoe problems during this game. It is fourth down. The ball is near the 20. Scott Aldridge on to do the kicking. Liddell George is deep once again. George is standing just outside his own 35-yard line, so it should be decent field position depending on the kind of kick that Aldridge is able to get away from deep in his own territory, and it's a boomer. He kicks away from the setback. The ball kicks straight up in the air and is batted out of bounds. We do have a flag back down at the line of scrimmage, or in the backfield, actually. Well, the question is, is it running into the kicker or roughing the kicker? And C.C. Daly says running into the kicker. That's a five-yard penalty and no automatic first down, so they'd have to do it again. Like we talked last week, it doesn't matter how the contact is initiated. If you're blocked into the punter, it's still running into the punter. C.C. Daly wants to find out. Oh, he needs a new football. That's what he needs. They... I tell you what, I think Tech wants to decline the penalty and leave the football back where it is, down at the 36 yard line. Five yards, running into the kicker against the defense, penalty declined, we'll have a first down. The only thought that I had that Tech might have taken that penalty, John, is you could run off a little more time and perhaps kick it deeper, but Bobby Ross confident that his defense can do the job in the final 87 seconds. We'll find out. Well, when you're that deep, too, in your own territory, a lot of bad things can happen if you re-kick it as well. The state usually lines those 10 men on the line of scrimmage, and they usually come after the kicker almost every time, so that might have been a factor in Bobby's thought process. Ball is spotted at the 37-yard line. A minute and 27 seconds remaining first half. Maynard and Shaw are the split backs. Straight back to passes, Davenport sets, throws short, bumped out of bounds is the tight end, Neil Auer, whose brother Scott was an all-ACC performer. They ran this play earlier in the game with a little more play action on the part of Davenport, but again, it's similar to the little curl routes they run with the backs out of the backfield. They do the same thing with the tight end, get some yardage, and got the bonus in that Auer got out of bounds. Took only five seconds off the clock. A minute 22 remaining first half. Maynard. Across the 45, he lost the football, and back the other way comes Georgia Tech. The Yellow Jackets have it still on his feet as Jarrell Williams. Williams dancing at the 25. Finally dragged down inside the 20 at the 17-yard line. Kirk Parrish made the tackle, but Williams almost danced all the way. I tell you what, he danced too much because if he would have stayed on the sidelines, he had a whole cordon of blockers in front of him. The ball is popped loose on a good hit by Thomas Balco. And coming up the football with the football is Williams. Now, if he stays to his left, look, he's got swelling out in front of him. But he cut back, and although he made a great run, Kirk Parrish was able to save perhaps the touchdown. Darrell Williams takes the ball down to the 17-yard line. A chance for Tech with a minute and seven seconds to play in the half. They're down by six. 13-7, NC State leads. Batted away. Great play defensively that time by Andres O'Neill, an ex-linebacker who has been moved to the defensive line, but O'Neill also can play the pass coverage. As you saw right there, he smelled out the little quick screen, and he nearly took it the other way. It'll be second down and 10. The ball is at the 17-yard line. Pettis goes to the right. Rodriguez comes to the left. Bell and Scott are the split backs. And straight back. Pump faking and in trouble at the 25-yard line. Jesse Campbell coming on the blitz and he got him. And now Tech wants timeout. Jesse Campbell does such a great job of disguising when he is going to blitz. He might line up in that same spot in the open field 
six or seven times in a row and then drop into coverage. This time he comes on the stunt. There's nobody to block him. Sean Jones gets buried. Jesse Campbell, one of the candidates for the Jim Thorpe Award a year ago and again here in 1990. He has been a big time performer for the Wolfpack, to say the least. We have certainly seen a couple of the best with Campbell and Swilling in this ball game. The ball, a loss of eight, goes all the way back to the 25-yard line. It is third down and 18 to go for Tech. Tech got its timeout, I think. They didn't take it off the scoreboard, but the Tech players are getting some water in the, the huddle there. Well, the other factor right now for Bobby Ross is he discusses the play with his quarterback, Sean Jones. Obviously, you want to keep the drive going and try and get the touchdown. You also want to avoid the sack, which could perhaps take you out of field goal range. Right now, with the ball just outside the 25, it would be a 42-yard attempt for Scott Sisson. 46 yards is his career best. Merchant to the right, Rodriguez to the left. They're the wide receivers. Bell and Scott, the split backs. It's a passing formation on third down and long yardage. Jones sets, fires, incomplete at the five-yard line. Intended for Merchant, and Johnson was there, number 21 defensively for the Wolfpack. Joe Johnson was part of the touchdown earlier in the game. Matched up here with Emmett Merchant. It's zone coverage. Watch Johnson react to the football. Stripping it away from the receiver. It's that recovery speed out of a cornerback that is so crucial. The ability to react and move to the football when it's in the air. Johnson does it as well as anybody. Aldridge will hold. This will be a 42-yard attempt. You see, as Jack mentioned, his long last year against Duke was 46. This is 42. The ball is down. The kick is up. And it is no good. The 42-yard attempt is no good. Still 43 seconds left to play in the first half. Each team has a couple of timeouts remaining, trying to make something happen in the closing seconds of the half. Well, Dick Sheridan knows that he dodged one that time. And I'm sure Jarrell Williams is thinking and will feel even worse about it when they watch the films tomorrow or Monday that if he had stayed the direction in which he was going on that fumble return, he might have scored. Well, all you have to do sometimes is run north and south. That's right. It's exactly true in this stadium. 13-7, still the six-point lead. Power running straight ahead by Maynard, the fullback, into the arms of Jeremiah McClary. McClary has been busy along that defensive line. And a reminder, we will see the Wolfpack at home in Raleigh next weekend, hosting Wake Forest as J.P. Sports coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference football continues. Wake and NC State coming up next week. Join us at 12 noon. The huddle clock is virtually the same as the game clock. Let's see if this is the last play. If Davenport's going to run it down, now they're just going to run the clock down. Shaw tries the sweep. Down he goes at the line of scrimmage. That should be the last play of the first half. It is as the clock winds down. A turnover-filled first half of action here in Atlanta. We have a player down on the field as the teams head to the locker room. It is Marlon Williams, number 56. We'll find out if it's a heat problem or an injury problem. We've had a little bit of both so far in the first half. And Mike Hogwood is standing by with Dick Sheridan. So let's go to Mike. Boy, is this a hot one today, Coach. Well, it's hot on the field, but I think both teams are handling it pretty well. What about your team's play in the first half? Well, I think Georgia Tech would have the same complaint we do, turnovers. What are you going to do? Is there anything you can do at halftime to adjust for that? Well, we just got to hold on to the ball better. And we have we jumped off sides a couple of times. It hurt us. And, uh, and of course, they've got a good defense. There. We're not blocking them as well as we need to. Some injury problems on defense to yourself with your couple of linebackers. I know that creates some depth problems for you. Well, we had a depth problem coming in, and we have a worse problem right now. I just hope that the condition can offset their depth. What's it going to take for you to win here in the second half? Elimination of turnovers, and we've got to continue to play tough on defense. All right, that's NC State coach Dick Sheridan now headed to the locker room with his team. His Wolfpack lead here, 13-7. to We are at halftime. We'll be back in Atlanta right after this. Stay with us. 
JP Sports exclusive coverage of ACC football is brought to you by BP Oil, makers of high-octane, high-performance gasoline. By Budget rent car For a rental that's loaded with extras at a price that isn't, the smart money is on budget. By your local oil heat dealer. Compare cost, comfort, and safety. You'll choose oil heat. And by the Schick Slim Twin Disposable Razor. It reaches every place on every face. ACC Football on JP Sports is brought to you by Infinity, who invites you to test drive the Q45 sedan or M30 sports coupe. By Days Inn. Days offers great rooms, great value, at over 1,000 great locations. And by Right Guard Sports Stick from Gillette. Anything less would be uncivilized. We're with Coach Bobby Ross of Georgia Tech. Coach, some turnovers in the first half I know had to concern you a great deal. Well, that's been our problem the whole first half, Mike. We turned the ball over four times, had four fumbles, not turned it over, but had four fumbles, turned the ball over three times, and you can't get any continuity to our offense. We just got to get into a flow and a, and a rhythm, and I think we'll be okay. All right, good luck to you in the second half. Bobby Ross, head coach of Georgia Tech. Let's go upstairs now, Jack and John. All right, Mike, thank you very, very much. Indeed, turnover is a big part of this. As a matter of fact, Jack, you look back at the first half, and each team really had only one good offensive drive. One good offensive series for each club towards the latter stages of the first half, and as we take a look at the Schlitz Malt Liquor halftime stats, uh, the one that stands out most glaringly, the turnovers that Bobby Ross talked about. Each team has turned the ball over three times. You can see the, the total offense, not much difference between the two clubs. NC State with a little bit of an advantage. That's because of a little better running game in the first half. But as we talked in the opening 30 minutes of play, John, it's going to be the second half that's going to be the determining factor in this football game. Who is going to hold up better as the heat goes on? Each team scored one touchdown in the first half. Georgia Tech had a great drive. This was the touchdown for the Wolfpack as the Vincent picked up the fumble, took it into the end zone, so it was a defensive touchdown there. Here is Georgia Tech's touchdown. This was a 23-yard touchdown pass, and it capped a great 80-yard drive. Well, we won't get a chance to show you that because we're already underway with the second half. Liddell George returning the opening kickoff of the second half. We are underway. That touchdown pass, Jones to Lester, 23 yards, made it 10-7. And then with 2.14 remaining in the half, Hartman kicked a 38-yard field goal, his second of the game. And those two field goals are the difference by Hartman. It's 13-7, and we're underway in the second half of play. Davenport has gone all the way. His team has the ball at his own 25-yard line. First down and 10. First offensive play, offensive series. The second half is underway. It's Maynard, the fullback, for a couple of yards as he moves out close to the 30. Coleman Rudolph made the tackle, along with Calvin Tiggle. And Calvin has had a big day. He's made some big hits. For NC State, they'd love to come out of the locker room, get a drive, go down and score a touchdown, and, and take a 13-point lead, then put Georgia Tech really up against it because of the heat being a factor when the game continues. Now Bird, who had some injury problems in practice last week, is now split to the left side. And again, it is the fullback, Maynard. He's got a first down as he forces his way out to the 37-yard line. Kevin Battle and Marlon Williams teamed up to bring him down. First down, 10. Charles Davenport with either Jackson or Shaw at the tailback spot, and usually Maynard, but we will also see Chris Cotton in that fullback slot. Al Bird with the broken bone in his right thumb out there wearing the soft cast in his right hand. Out of the I formation right now, Shaw is the tailback, Maynard's the fullback, and on the option play, Davenport spins forward to about the 44-yard line. Thomas Balcom made the tackle. Good read on the option play by Davenport. Jarrell Williams had stepped up and met the fullback Maynard. He was going to give the ball to the fullback, but his read is that inside linebacker, and once Williams made contact with Maynard, he pulled the ball back out, made positive yardage. Made seven, as a matter of fact. The ball is at the 44-yard line, the opening drive of the second half, and out of the eye formation, it is second down and three. Spinning forward for the first down is Maynard. Marco Coleman and Calvin Tiggle, again, the two linebackers teaming up for the tackle, and it's a first down. 
Got another guy hobbling off the field, Reggie Lawrence, one of the wide receivers coming off for NC State. He'll be replaced by Bobby Jurgens. Down he goes on his sideline. So there again, maybe some muscle problems. Cramping could be a problem. First and 10 at the 48-yard line. The drive began at the 25. Option play from behind. Loose football, and Tech may have it in midfield. Marco Coleman stripped him. The ball went to the turf, and Tech comes up with it. Here's Calvin Tiggle, who has the ball. Well, Tiggle and Coleman, the two linebackers in that four linebacker set for Georgia Tech, have been the guys to do it. Watch Coleman again with the great speed. He just runs Davenport down, strips away the football, and Tiggle covers it. There were a host of blue-shirted Tech players there. There was no doubt that the Yellow Jackets were going to come up with that turnover, the seventh of the ball game, the fourth by NC State. Seven turnovers. Marco Coleman caused that one. At midfield, it is first down and ten. Georgia Tech's first possession, second half. 12.47 to play in the third quarter. Covington, the tight end, moves from the left to the right. Jones' pass is incomplete. Almost intercepted over there. Corey Edmond was the guy breaking on the play. You can see him hobbling a little bit. He went off in the first half with a twisted knee. He is out there at less than 100%, obviously, but nearly came up with the fumble. He is one of the emotional leaders on the defense for Dick Sheridan's Wolfpack, and I think it was one of those situations, hey, coach, you can't keep me out. I want to be out there. How long he continues, that will be another question. Jones has missed his last five pass attempts. Three receivers split to the right side of the field. The option play, Jones on the pitch, but not much there at all for William Bell as he runs right into Mark Thomas. The problem that plagued Georgia Tech all throughout the first half, with the exception of their touchdown drive, was the inability to get good yardage on first or second down. Here we go again with the third and a long seven, almost eight yards for the first down. Those are tough play calls. The ball is sitting at the 47-yard line, so let's do call it a third down and eight for Bobby Ross. Only one out of five for the Yellow Jackets on third down. And all kinds of company back near the 40-yard line. Tyler Lawrence was back there waiting. And before Jones could even turn around, he was down at his own 40. Watch the left side of the screen. They've got Lawrence on the blitz, and they had... Mike Jones coming in uncovered. Ricky Logo coming in as well. Big loss on the play. And the NC State defense does it again. Aldrich to punt again. His fifth punt of the afternoon. Liddell George is deep. Standing at his own 15-yard line. Not as long a kick, but a high-hanging kick. And it takes a tech bounce. Inside the 10-yard line spotted near the eight. So a great hanging kick, Jack, and he got the good roll as well. 61 yards on the punt. Well, when you get the hang time and you get that nose to turn over at least a little bit, that ball is going to get that good kick, and he got about a 20-yard bounce, and that puts NC State deep in the hole. 11-15 to play here in the third quarter. The Wolfpack leading by six. Welcome back to the heat of Bobby Dodd Stadium. It's 13-7, NC State leading Georgia Tech. Down to that hot field we go, and Mike Hogwood. Mike? Well, guys, the story down here is with uh, State's uh, linebacker, Corey Edmonds. He, as you know, tried to go for two plays. Jack mentioned he was limping. Well, he's come off the field and taken his pads off. He tried. He just can't go and won't play anymore today. Well, that is bad news for the Wolfpack. Corey Edmond finished for the afternoon. Here's more bad news for field position. The ball is set at the eight-yard line. New set of running backs, Aubrey Shaw and Chris Cotton. Cotton, the fullback, the up man in that eye formation. Shaw's the tailback. Turner and Turner. Ricky Turner and William Turner are the wide receivers. Ricky to the left and William to the right. Long count by Davenport. Fullback Cotton 
He's got a little room. He's knocked down as he gets to the 15-yard line by number one. He really is number one in a lot of people's books. Ken Swilling. Swilling had to step up and fill in on that play. They had Marlon Williams blitzing from the outside, and the play ran by him. Swilling's going to have to come off because he's got an equipment problem. You see Williams go out of your picture, and now there's no outside support. So it's Swilling who has to come up and lose his helmet to make the stop. It's called sticking your head right in there. A seven-yard pickup. It's second down and three. Ball at the 15-yard line. Shaw. About a yard, a yard and a half. He runs right into Jeremiah McClary. The redshirt senior from Lawrenceville, Georgia, made the hit. The difference in this football game right now, the reason why NC State is up by six points, they've had a little more success on first down, setting up more second and medium, third and short situations. And also, despite the four turnovers, John, Georgia Tech has not converted one of those mistakes into a score. And here's the formation we've seen several times. Three tight ends in the lineup. Neil Auer, Alex Nicholson, and Todd Harrison. And trying to follow the power blockers for a first down is the quarterback Davenport, tackled by Jeremiah McClary. You see Ken Swilling also near the football, and he is close to a first down. This one might be close enough to measure. He's going to be short. And NC State knows he's short. As they already had the punting team going out. C.C. Daly says fourth down. And Dick Sheeran is trying to figure out what happened on that play. Said, I gave you all those blockers. Didn't they do the job? Put all that beef out there. About 750 pounds of it trying to lead the way, and it didn't work out. So Muse is on to kick his third punt. We've punted well so far today as both sides have had good kicking. Dick Sheeran, I think, wanted to ask for a measurement, but the down marker is on the 18-yard line, and the ball is just past the 17-yard line. And apparently, whatever the momentary stop was, it has been taken care of. We will restart. The team managers for NC State on the far side of the field started to come on. 9.44 remaining in the third quarter. Should be good field position for Tech. You can hear the up back calling the signals. Here comes the pressure and the block. The ball is going to spin out of bounds at the 15 yard line. It is blocked in there by Willie Clay. Number four, Willie got it. They were coming hard on that one and it turns the ball back to them at the 15. Fifth turnover of the afternoon and this time Georgia Tech has its best field position yet. They made a little bit of a change. Kevin Peoples changed his alignment just before the snap. That ended up leaving Willie Clay uncovered from the outside, and he just beat the punter to the football. Great individual effort by the junior out of Pittsburgh. From just outside the 15-yard line, first down 10 for Tech. They go with three wide receivers. Lester, Rodriguez, and Pettis all in there. Here comes a blitz from the Wolfpack. A quick pass for the end zone. Incomplete. Rodriguez was the intended receiver. He had just a step, but he needed another half step to get to the ball. That was just a beautifully thrown ball. Joe Johnson on the coverage, and he is up hobbling a little bit. That was a beautifully thrown ball by Sean Jones. This is the fade route, and Rodriguez is there. He just couldn't quite come up with the football. Rodriguez at six feet needed to be about 6'2 to haul that one in. 9.20 to play third quarter. The tailback bell for about three. He's close to the 12-yard line. Clayton Henry, who's playing for the injured Billy Ray Hines, up there to help defensively. William Lester, a sophomore from Miami. Very, very fast. Runs a 4-5-40. Third down. Let's give him four. It'll be third and six. The ball is closer to the 11-yard line. Inside nine minutes. Remaining third quarter. John Jones, one out of six on third down plays. The backs are split. It's a passing formation. Here's the blitz. And they've got it. Ray Frost blitzing from his inside linebacker spot, and he drops him back at the 21. 
Georgia Tech has not done a good job this afternoon picking up the inside stunts of the Wolfpack. You see Ray Frost coming in uncovered. Frost, who missed last year as a redshirt, glad to be back playing football again. See how well he hit himself on that stunt? He was hiding behind Clayton Henry and did a little loop stunt, came in untouched. A 39-yard field goal attempt for Sisson. He missed earlier from 42. This is his attempt from 39, and it is no good. Well, Sisson is 0 for 2. He's missed from 42. He's missed from 39. Eight minutes exactly to play and a golden opportunity by the board for Tech. Five turnovers by the Wolfpack and Georgia Tech has not been able to convert any of them. We've got timeout on the field here in Atlanta, 13-7 NC State. This word from your local stations. Quarter. I'm John Sanders along with Jack Corrigan and Mike Hogwood down on the field. The ball at the 22-yard line, first down 10, following the missed field goal. Maynard and Jackson in the I formation. Davenport has gone all the way at quarterback. Pass is incomplete, intended over there for Bobby Jurgens, number nine, but it was a little bit too far toward the sidelines for him, and he exchanges some greetings with Willie Clay. Well, we talked about the great coverage ability of Joe Johnson, one and one. Willie Clay equal to the efforts of Mr. Johnson. Talking with Ted Kane, the offensive coordinator for NC State, he said he was very impressed with how well Clay covered in the open field. Lawrence to the left and Jurgens to the right. It's the tailback Jackson. Nowhere to go. He was met immediately by the middle of the defensive line, Battle and McClary. And I'll say one thing for Jeremiah McClary. He's had himself a heck of a football game. Well, I mentioned before, they've got great size on that defensive front line for Georgia Tech with McClary and Battle and Rudolph. And McClary does such a good job of holding his ground and clogging up all the activity. He was an injured player, Mike G, the left tackle for NC State being assisted off the field he'll be replaced by scott woods a freshman mcclary was just a little guy when he got here he weighed 250. he's at 40 pounds he's up in the 290s now shaw back to the original line of scrimmage and then a yard or so jarrell williams well heat has been the factor this afternoon both teams bogged down by the heat that's been tough for the people in the stands as well that little guy trying to stay cool a little lady it is excuse me I, yeah that's it's tough she says but i'm a football fan and i'm here Hughes is back to kick once again mcgill will be deep for georgia tech low wobbly kick fielded at the 38 out to the 45 and banged out of bounds on the play. Dexter Royal down the coverage. The kick is 39 yards. The return is seven. So the stalemate continues. We've still, Jack, really only see the, seen the two good offensive drives. Both came in the second quarter. Well, for Georgia Tech, it's the opening game problems that can often take place. And then for both teams, it's the heat. More than anything else, it's the heat. Pettis and Rodriguez are both split to the far side. Bell and Lawson are the running backs. The option play, Bell across midfield and out of bounds. He got to about the 48-yard line where Sebastian Savage ran him out. We have not seen Sean Jones run the true option very often this afternoon. That's the first time they've done that, and it paid off with a seven-yard pickup. It will be second down and three from the NC State side of the field. Ball is spotted at the 47. John Jones, the ACC Rookie of the Year. 15 touchdowns last year, 12 passing. He ran for three. Three wide receivers in there, and here comes the blitz up the middle. Down at midfield. Again, the blitz was coming all the way, and it was Ray Frost for the second time using that to his advantage, and he drops him for a loss. Well, one of the things that Ralph Regan, the offensive coordinator for Georgia Tech, talked about with the NC State defense, very subtly, 
they get themselves into situations where they have an advantage in manpower at the point of attack. And we have seen that on more than a few occasions here this afternoon. It is third down and five from midfield. Two tight ends. This is one of them, Covington, and they sweep, slipping and falling as William Bell. We've seen William have that problem off and on on the artificial surface here, even though it's his home turf. But actually, in truth, they only work out here once a week, Jack. They spend the rest of their practice time on a natural field. Well, Mike Hoggo talked about it earlier in the day. With the shoes you wear on the turf, they are many times glued rather than stitched, and they are made of a great deal of rubber and rubber composition and you get in this kind of heat it just starts to fall apart Aldridge a red shirt senior from Smyrna Georgia back to kick Liddell George standing at his own 10 yard line again a high kick he comes forward feels it at the 15 20 head down and he powers his way close to the 25 yard line Kevin Peoples down defensively on the kick team to make the tackle and let's go down to Mike well, guys, you know, when you talk about the heat, you talk about this hard-fought game, it is just a game, and especially when you consider where our armed forces are over in Saudi Arabia. And to honor them today, the Georgia Tech Athletic Department and Coach Bobby Ross gave away 1,000 tickets to families of the 197th Infantry Brigade and the 36th Engineer Group from Fort Benning, Georgia, who uh, their families are overseas in Saudi Arabia serving our country, and they're all here today and this afternoon courtesy of Georgia Tech. It's a great guest. All right, Mike, thank you very much. Play action fake. The pass is complete to Greg Maynard. Pick up a five out of the backfield. Maynard the fullback. Got about five on the play. It'll be second down. I think they ought to just keep going back to that little turn in, little turn out with the tailbacks and the fullbacks and the tight ends against the NC State linebackers. They've had a lot of success. Georgia Tech defensively has denied the NC State passing game anything deep. So if they're going to give you the short one, take it. Two tight ends, the lone wide receiver is Turner. He's split to this side, and on the option play, about a yard short of the first down, is Davenport, Thomas Balkman made the tackle. Davenport passing in the ball game is six out of 10 for 70 yards, and he's thrown the one interception. That was really the only time he tried to go deep when he had the ball picked off in the end zone by Kenny Swilling. Third down and one. Third and short. On several occasions, they have been stuffed with good anticipation by the Georgia Tech linebackers. Let's see if he runs the option here and play fakes inside and tries to go to the corner. They go again to the power formation. Three tight ends. Shot diving. I don't know if he got there. If he gets across the 35, it's a first down. First down. The signal from the booth to my right is first down. And verified by referee C.C. Daly down on the field. This time, good explosion off the line of scrimmage by the NC State offensive line. And Shaw, with a little bit of forward acceleration on his part, was able to lean his way over that 35-yard line and gain the first down. Shaw has carried nine times and has only five yards to show for it, so it has been tough going for him. Davenport back, pass complete at the 40, across the 40 to the 43 is Tyrone Jackson. Jackson made the catch, and he'll be within two yards of another first down. Curly Day made the tackle. If it worked the first time, let's see if it'll work the second time. On first and 10, they threw the ball in the right flat to Greg Maynard. First and 10 here, they go into the left flat to Tyrone Jackson. And if you're gonna pick up seven and eight yards each time, you give yourself that better play call on second down and even third down. Two tight ends. Charles Davenport will operate out of the eye formation. Maynard and Jackson behind him. Maynard, first down. He gets across the 45, close to the 47 before he's driven back by Day and Swilling, but he's got another NC State first down. Well, you're seeing lots of bodies go in and out now as both clubs try and keep fresh people on the field. Down to the 320 mark of the third quarter, and we have had no points up on the board in this third period. You could see them gathered around the player down on the tech bench as well. Three minutes and eight seconds remaining, third quarter. Backs are split. Passing formation. Here comes the blitz. They've got him. Down he goes. Marlon Williams 
came a long way, Jack, but he still got there. Well, that was good protection downfield by the secondary, Swilling and Balkum and Clay, what you call a coverage sack. Marlon Williams had a run a long way. You can see right there, he wanted to run the little curl route. Curly Day was right there, as well as one of the other linebackers. And Davenport had to eat it as Williams gets another sack. Fourth time that Davenport has gone down in the backfield. The loss is nine. It's second and 19. The football all the way back to the 38-yard line. Trying to set up the screen, and they do. Jackson with it, 40, 45, across midfield. He's down at the 45 of Tech by Tom Johnson, just short of a first down. He got about 18 of the 19 back. Johnson made the tackle. Charles Davenport did a good job here of disguising the screen. See him looking to his right, lets the pressure come on, and whirls back to his left. Jackson had some blockers in front of him. Kenny Swilling, even though he doesn't make the tackle there, did a good enough job of stringing out the play and involving the protection for Jackson on Swilling that his teammates could make the tackle. Third and short. They go to the power formation, the power eye, sweep right. Jackson, oh, he is hit and upended at the line of scrimmage. He was drilled on the play. Tyrone Jackson just straightened up as he got to the line of scrimmage by Jarrell Williams. I mean, that was a big time hit. It looked like Jackson was going to have the first down. He's got Maynard out in front of him, and watch Williams fill the hole and straighten him up. Second time this afternoon that Jarrell Williams has come up and filled the hole and stopped the ball car carrier short of the first down. Man, what a hit by Jarrell Williams. Swilling is in to receive the punt. He's standing at his own 10-yard line. Tom Muse doing the kicking for NC State. Looking for that sideline. And it takes a bit of a tech bounce and goes out near the 15. Well, that's where Georgia Tech will have it with 40 seconds remaining to be played in the third quarter. It's a 30-yard punt. Goes out of bounds at the 15. 13-7. NC State has the lead here with 40 seconds left in the third quarter. And we will be back with more football from Atlanta. The ACC coverage here on JP Sports returns after this. The fourth possession of the third quarter coming up for Tech, down by six, 13-7. We have only 40 seconds left in the third quarter. Emmett Merchant split to the short side. That's the right side. Bobby Reed Rodriguez is split left. Bell and Scott and the running backs in the eye formation. This is Bell. He's got five, maybe seven yards as he races out across the 20. Near the 23-yard line, Tyler Lawrence there to make the tackle. And you see 30 seconds now left to play in the third quarter. More significantly, we also saw Emmett Merchant come off the field the deep threat at the split end position now has a problem forces Bobby Ross to bring Terry Pettis into the ball game and Keenan Walker as well Walker a red shirt freshman is in there second and three Jones down the middle he's got a man open and the catch made at the 46 yard line Terry Pettis sliding down with a big catch and a first down near the 47 on the final play of the third period Terry Pettis running a flag route found the hole between the underneath coverage in the deep zone picks up the first down now I said time had run out we are still awaiting the official indication that it had they've already put 15 more minutes up on the board and I guess indeed the third quarter has come to a close but it's so hot that everything is happening in slow motion here 13 to 6 is the score NC State leads Georgia Tech let's adjust everything regroup we've got 15 more minutes to go back to Atlanta after this <laughs> trying to beat the heat in Atlanta and this is one way to do it with bags of ice but they won't last much longer those Wolfpack fans say we'll take some of that ice thank you very much 
And you can see some of the Wolfpack fans came dressed for the occasion. The ball is at the 47-yard line following that 25-yard pass play pickup. And we are about to begin the fourth quarter of play. I'm John Sanders along with Jack Corrigan and Mike Hogwood, who has been, boy, I think he's maintained his cool very well on the sideline, don't you? What a guy down there on that turn. Better than 115 degrees. Rodriguez and Pettis are both split to this side, the two wide receivers. The backs are split, Bell and Scotton. Pettis in motion. Scotton cuts back across midfield, puts a hand down and keeps himself alive to the 45-yard line, and let's go down to the field in Mike Hogwood. Well, guys, uh, first of all, I hope I don't get in trouble for delivering those fans some ice, but they've been really getting hot here this, this afternoon. The Heat's taking its soul. Number 98, Kevin Battle for Georgia Tech. He's been having some cramps. He's out of there. Aubrey Shaw running back for State. He's in the locker room right now. He's overheated, and he also has an ankle problem. All right, thank you very much. The ball is at the 45. The gain is eight. It's second down and about two and a half to go. Edison motion. Close to a first down is William Bell, Ray Frost, trying to keep him from getting to the 43-yard line and picking up that first down. Let's see where the referees place the football. Looks like he's short. Just a bit. About a half a yard shy. CeCe Daly is going to bring the chains out to see exactly how close Georgia Tech is to a first down. You get the feeling here, John, that as this game progresses that the next score is going to win the football game. We are in the fourth quarter with 14 minutes and nine seconds remaining. We've talked a little bit about NC State going home next week to host Wake, and that's the distance. A little less than a yard remaining for the first down. Kind of a sputtering start for Tech. They were late starting, and they'll be off next week. Well, they're in a situation, though, that they have to win an opening ball game in the conference to avoid being in an uphill battle all year long. Of course, you've got a big game later on today in the conference, Clemson at Virginia, but this is almost as important, I'd say equally as important. They bring in the extra tight ends. Diving for the first down is William Bell. Bell tucked the ball away. Remember, he fumbled on the first play of the game, but he picks up the first down as he nudges it inside the 42-yard line. Georgia Tech's lone touchdown of the afternoon came on a long drive. It was an 80-yard drive. This one has the chance to be even longer. It started back inside their 20-yard line. Started at the 15, as a matter of fact. The ball now close to the 41. Let's call it the 42. It is first and 10. Pass is complete to the tight end down to the 29-yard line. Covington. Jesse Campbell made the tackle, but Covington breaking out. A little spin move by the quarterback, Jones, and he picks up another first down. He wanted to go deeper, but the pressure put on by Mark Thomas forced him to take the underneath read, and Tom Covington, who has been bothered with a little bit of a groin pull, catches the ball alongside of Jesse Campbell and picks up another Tech first down. And Derek Gaucher checks into the lineup, a redshirt sophomore from Columbus, Georgia. First and 10, ball at the 30. Good drive underway by Tech. 12.56 to play in the game now. We're in the fourth quarter. Here comes the blitz. Jones steps up, gets away from the pressure, now throws toward the end zone. In and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Keenan Walker, who just broke free at the last moment, but could not hang on. And Joe Johnson, who had the coverage on the play, is still down in the end zone. Sean Jones, what a play here to get away from Jesse Campbell and then fired it upfield and Walker broke free and just didn't catch the football. Joe Johnson, the outstanding quarterback, looking back for the ball. See how Walker accelerated? He's got to catch that ball. It was right there to be caught. And on the play, Johnson just now getting up and returning to the Wolfpack sideline. But Buddy Green, the defensive coordinator for NC State, told me the other day, he said, one of the things that is most scary about Sean Jones, his ability to make a big play out of a bad situation. It looked like he was going to be sacked. Somehow he gets away from Jesse Campbell and should have had a touchdown pass. 8 of 17, 113 yards for the ACC Rookie of the Year. 
his sophomore season. Option and some room inside the 20. The 15, he's finally forced out of bounds by Fernandez Vinson. The snake got him, but he kind of snaked his way deep into Wolfpack territory. Again, Sean Jones running the true option for perhaps only the second or third time this afternoon. Got a good block by the fullback, Scott, and then made a great fake and got Jesse Campbell leaning the wrong way. And Snake Vincent saved the touchdown. Sean had to make a nifty move over a, a cheerleader's megaphone as well going out of bounds. The ball is inside the nine. It is first and goal. The Yellow Jackets go to two tight ends. Walker is the lone wide receiver. Jones drops it in there, and it's going to be a touchdown. Out of the backfield, it's William Bell all alone. Bell into the end zone for the touchdown, and Tech has tied the ball game. When you live with the blitz, you occasionally die with the blitz. Ray Frost was, and Tyler Lawrence were both stunning on the play. John Jones had enough time to get the ball up over. Here comes Jesse Campbell. He was also blitzing. It was Ray Frost who drops Sean Jones, but not before he gets the football away. And with three guys stunning, there was nobody to cover Bell. Sisson now trying to give Georgia Tech the lead, and he does. 12.32 to go. Georgia Tech has come back to grab a one-point lead. It's Tech 14, NC State 13. The Yellow Jackets have answered. We'll find out about the Wolfpack when we come back to Atlanta. First touchdown of William Bell's career. He got the nod today when T.J. Edwards went down with an injury. Edwards tried to go, and Buzz is trying to go as well. Celebrating a touchdown drive, 85 yards. Took three minutes and eight seconds. The touchdown pass from Jones to Bell. And Jack, let's look at it one more time. Again, the blitz came on. Frost and Campbell. And that left William Bell all alone. And the youngster scores his first touchdown of 1990. And down we go to the field once again where Mike Hogwood is standing by. Mike. Hey guys, this is William Bell's old shoe. Jack told us these things start coming apart in the big heat. Well, he put on a brand new pair of shoes and look what happened, guys. Touchdown. Yes, sir. Those shoes really helped, right? Well, it makes a difference. I got to tell you, we've seen a couple of guys this afternoon slip and fall because the stiffness, you know, the support that those shoes give there's such a fine line and when that rubber gets heated up and gets more pliable the support goes Sisson will kick off George and Savage will be deep Liddell George to the far side Sebastian Savage to the near side 12 minutes and 32 seconds left to go Pedals into the end zone, and he will come out. 5, 10, 15, diving across the 20 to the 22-yard line. I wondered about his judgment at first, Jack, but he got back there. Frank Scott made the tackle. The ball just beyond the 20. It'll be first and 10. Now, let's see if NC State goes back to what has worked for them on first down. That is the little curl routes by the backs out of the backfield or the crossing route by the tight end. Dick Sheridan's ball club trails for the first time. 14-13. Georgia Tech leads the ball at the 22. Option play. No gain. Again, Jeremiah McClary, number 96, all 297 pounds of him. McClary, Coleman, and Tiggle have played great football this afternoon up front for the Georgia Tech defense. McClary, the most experienced guy up front. He has shown that it paid off that he got some time a year ago. He is that much better here this year. Jerkins is split to the right. Albert is split to the left. Out of the eye, some play action. Rolling near side. Pass is complete. 
Knocked out of bounds is Maynard, the fullback. He's hit by Jarrell Williams. A gain of five on the play, and it'll be third down and five. See, I would have gone with that play on first down and set up a second and five rather than the third and five. Dick Sheridan and his offensive coaching staff thought that they could get to the outside with the option on first down. Now they're in that tough call. A little too far to run. Yet you hesitate throwing the ball too much deep in your own territory. Aubrey Shaw is now the tailback. Ricky Turner and William Turner are the wide receivers as they try to keep the troops as fresh as possible. 11.44 to go in the game. State is down by a point. Pass is overthrown. Intercepted at the 40-yard line. Intercepted by Curly Day. Coleman Rudolph put great pressure on Charles Davenport. I'm not sure if he was throwing that to Todd Harrison or William Turner. It ends up going to neither man and Curly Day with a diving interception. I think he was trying to go to Harrison as tight end, but the pressure forced him to throw the ball behind the tight end and Curly Day picks it off. Sixth turnover by the Wolfpack. So Curly Day comes up with the interception. That's the second thrown by Davenport. The ball at the 40-yard line of NC State. Sean Jones brings him up. Bell for five, maybe six yards, tackled by Jesse Campbell. Campbell number 42. A happy curly day, 11.25 remaining in the game. You know, the problem for Tech, they've had the two great drive stack, but when they've gotten opportunities like this one, they really haven't been able to cash it in. This is a chance now for them to open up some daylight on the scoreboard. You saw the five turnovers there. You could really say six if you include the block punt. They have fumbled the ball three times, and they have thrown two interceptions. But to this point, Tech has not converted, as John mentioned. Second down and four. Ball is on the 34. Scrimmage stays on his feet, gets outside and dives inside the 25. A 10-yard pickup. It looked like he was going to be in deep trouble in the backfield, Jack, but he escaped and got outside. Again, NC State has been living with the blitz much of the afternoon. Here they come again. And Bell was able to slip by one of the stunning linebackers and get it into the secondary. We talked earlier about the fatigue being a factor more on defense because you're a chaser. Well, there was the long touchdown drive by Tech and three plays later they're back out on defense the ball now at the 24 yard line Bell has carried 15 times for 57 yards he is the lone setback tight end Covington in motion here he comes short side 25 20 very close to another first down as he gets to the 12 yard line Savage ran him out of bounds but William Bell all of a sudden Jack has become a real force in this ball game and that offensive line they went to the two tight ends and they are controlling the line of scrimmage watch the block on the left side of your screen right up there on top now by Tom Covington and then downfield by Terry Pettis he was able to have a whole corridor of open space before Savage was able to make contact down around the 12 yard line and the Yellow Jackets sensing the good opportunity that they have here Stegall, Lester, Walker, three wide receivers. Here's the quarterback draw. Inside the 10 to the 9, a gain of 3. Elijah Austin made the tackle. Again, that quarterback draw is such a timing play. When is the, rest, the, the best time for that quarterback to bring the ball back down and step forward? Second time that Sean Jones has run it. Second time that the nose tackle has been able to be close to the play and disrupt it with a linebacker finishing it off. 9.50 remaining in the game. Second down and eight. Option play. And hanging on to it is Jeff Wright, just barely. Back at the 12-yard line, that was almost disaster for Tech. The quarterback, Sean Jones, never really had control and kind of pushed it in the direction of Wright. And we have gone three and four deep in some places so far this afternoon. Sean Jones must have been watching Darian Hagan make an improbable pitch in a ball game against Tennessee for Colorado. He tried to do the same. It nearly proved costly. Third down and almost ten. State's not going to blitz this time. Jones changing up at the line of scrimmage. 
Walker and Stiegel are the wide receivers going in the end zone to Stiegel. It's intercepted. Picked off by Tyler Lawrence. Lawrence jumping up in front of the intended receiver, David Stegall, and he makes the interception. Well, if you're going to throw a pass into the end zone, if your man can't catch it, the next person to catch it should be the popcorn vendor in about the fourth row. But Sean Jones underthrows this ball in a great play by the redshirt freshman Tyler Lawrence. I mean, that is an outstanding play, and he somehow got his right foot down inbounds to stop the tech threat. And once again, Georgia Tech comes em up, comes up empty after an NC State turnover. First and ten at the 20-yard line, following the interception by Lawrence. Aubrey Shaw, the tailback. Greg Maynard's the fullback, and it's Maynard. Spinning forward for about three, Coleman Rudolph made the tackle. Georgia Tech has had opportunity after opportunity and has not converted. Well, you see in this graphic right here what has happened after NC State turnovers. They have missed a couple of field goals and twice turned the ball right back to the Wolfpack. A gain of three, second down seven at the 23. Charles Davenport has gone all the way at quarterback. He's wrapped up at the 20-yard line. Hit on the play by Marlon Williams. Williams was not fooled at all by the play fake, and he almost ripped the helmet off the quarterback. Well, this young man out of Decatur, Georgia, is going to play an awful lot of football for Bobby Ross's Yellow Jackets. They like his potential. He's got great speed. Boy, between Williams and Coleman on the outside, they've got big guys who run so very well. 14-13, a one-point lead. The clock will become a factor before long. We count down towards 7.30 remaining in the game. The pass is caught at the 25-yard line by Jay Gunter. Gunter made the catch, but he's well short of first down territory. It'll be fourth down and five. Great pressure on Davenport. He has to go to the underneath man. And they had plenty of coverage. Eric Fry and Calvin Tiggle were right there, forcing another punt for the Wolfpack. And again, it's Jason McGill back to receive the kick from this young man, Tom Muse. There's Jason. He's a freshman standing back at his own 32-yard line. A wobbly kick and not as long. And it rolls out of bounds near the Georgia Tech 46-yard line. 30-yard punt. Good field position for the ACC Rookie of the Year last year, Sean Jones. He'll bring his team out, leading by one, just inside seven minutes remaining. A word now from your local stations. Along with Jack Corrigan and Mike Hogwood, I'm John Sanders. 6.52 remaining to be played here in Atlanta. A one-point lead for Georgia Tech. And the game summary here, as we close in in the last part of this ballgame, NC State's defense has been terrific. However, they have been burned by their blitzing techniques. And Georgia Tech could have, Jack, a bigger lead had they taken better advantage of the chances that have been presented to them. Well, this was not off of a turnover, but again, a good opportunity. They're out near midfield to start this possession. Jeff Wright is the tailback. Stefan Scotton is the fullback. Stiegel, Lester, and Rodriguez. Three wide receivers in there, and down he goes at the 49 after a gain of three. David Merritt made the tackle on the redshirt freshman Jeff Wright, who had a great spring game. Jeff averaged 7.4 yards per carry in the spring game. Two things here for Georgia Tech. Obviously, they want to extend their current one-point lead. They'd love it to be eight. They also want to run as much time as possible off the clock. Walker and Stegall, the wide receivers split right. Stegall in motion. Option play. Right inside the 45, down near the 43. Savage ran him out, but it should be enough for a Georgia Tech first down. Most of the afternoon when Georgia Tech has had success pitching the ball to the tailback out of the option, they've done it to the short side of the field. Forced the linebacker to make a commitment. Tyler Lawrence went after the quarterback, and they had the corner turned with Wright, the redshirt freshman. 
At the 43, it is a first down. Rodriguez to the right. Stegall left. Pounding back the other way is Scott as he dives inside the 40, down to the 36, tripped up by Clayton Henry. Stefan, who was an academic All-American, had enough sense to stay inbounds as you see scores elsewhere. Maryland, a surprise so far. Scott Zolak to Barry Johnson. And of course to give them a halftime lead. We saw Mr. Zolak and company last week. Scott had a great game as he waited four years to finally become the starting quarterback for the Terrapins. In second year as the starter for Georgia Tech. His red shirt sophomore Sean Jones. Second down three. Much better on first down plays in the last couple of drives. Here's the option. It's right. At the 30. Cuts it back. He's got a first down inside the 25-yard line. Joe Johnson had to make the tackle. And once again, Tech is beginning to show some domination along the line of scrimmage. Well, they caught NC State in a blitz again. Watch Jesse Campbell run right by the play. And Wright accelerating, running north-south. Gets the ball down inside the 25. The clock continues to tick down. Down to 5-10 to go as a frustrated Jesse Campbell hopes he and his defensive teammates can do something to stop this drive. You see the bandaging on his left hand. He dislocated a thumb in last week's ball game. The ball at the 24. It's first down 10. They shift right from one side to the other, and it took them... Well, he called the timeout yeah, just the time before out. the penalty. Almost got the penalty, but they do have to take a timeout. Four minutes and 55 seconds remaining. Bobby Ross's team is up by a point. They'd like to add to it. A good drive is underway. They're inside the 25. We'll be right back. 14-13, and Georgia Tech leading NC State with 4.55 remaining in the football game. And a very nice opening day. Hot crowd on hand here in Atlanta, 40,021. The best they've had since they had a big number for Alabama back in 84. And it's even more impressive when you consider the school is not in session. Graduation for the summer term was actually yesterday. The fall term will not begin until later this month. They'll play a couple of home games before they have the students. The dorms are closed right now, but still over 40,000 on hand. And right now they're watching a Tech one-point lead. The ball at the 24, following Wright's 12-yard run. Scott in the backfield is going to lose yardage in the grasp of Tyler Lawrence. He will go down at the 30 for a loss of six. Stephen Scott looking for some help here from Jeff Wright. And Wright is just manhandled by Lawrence, who went right through the blocker and then made the tackle as well. One thing you learn when you're in that split back situation, you better be able to block as well as run. And it's been an impressive afternoon for Mr. Lawrence, who had an interception in the end zone earlier in the second half. But the Wolfpack defense must rise to the occasion now. That's Pettis in motion. Option play. Right. Inside the 20. Spins to the 18. Fernandez Vinson, the snake who picked up a ball and took it for a touchdown earlier, makes the tackle there. The ball down to the 18. It'll be third down. Well, you, you get about 75 snaps from scrimmage on each side. As a rule, 65 to 75. Right here, third down and four will be the biggest snap of the afternoon for both these clubs. And Wright playing only here in the second half has done a pretty good job. 32 yards and five carries. Big, big third down play. Pettis, the motion man, number 11. Here comes the blitz again. Scott on his feet. Inside the 15. Fights his way for a first down to the 13-yard line. Vincent straightens him up, but I think he's got enough, Jack. He should have gotten about five on the play and a first down. Stephen Scott, who the Georgia Tech coaches say came into preseason camp better prepared than any other time in his Georgia Tech career, taking advantage of increased opportunities to carry the football, gets a crucial first down for the Rambling Wreck. And he will be prepared for post-football because he's in electrical engineering. He's an outstanding student. A 3.4 grade average in electrical engineering and a big, big first down at the 13-yard line. Scott again. Powers his way inside the 10, close to the 9-yard line. Tyler Lawrence made the tackle with help from number 49, Ray Frost. And NC State burns the first of its three timeouts. 
you're in a situation here that you almost consider it a goal-to-goal -goal situation. Now, Georgia Tech can get a first down just inside the three-yard line, but you've got to play this almost like the Yellow Jackets would be content with a field goal. So you want to try and conserve as much of the clock as you can. You have the ability to stop the clock on offense with passes out of bounds and running out of bounds. Defense, you don't have that luxury, so it has to be a judicious use of the timeouts here by NC State to try and hang in here to give their offense one more chance to score. And we'll have one more chance to see them again next week. Wake Forest will visit Carter Finley in North Carolina State, 12 noon right here as JP Sports continues its live coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference football. And Lee, we look forward to that trip to Raleigh. The ball is inside the 10-yard line here. And if you're NC State, you do think about giving up the field goal because you know you can still win the ball game with a touchdown. However, the Wolfpack hasn't been able to score in the second half. This will be the 10th play of the drive when they snap it here on second down and six for Bobby Ross's offensive unit. They have brought in Covington, Gaucher as twin tight ends with just Rodriguez as a lone wide receiver. They'll work out of the eye. Wright and Scott are the running backs. The tight end in motion. Here is Wright. Five. Touchdown. Wright into the end zone. And Georgia Tech with 2.49 to play in the game has scored. Derek Gaucher and Tom Covington, the two tight ends. Covington in motion and Gaucher, the tight end on the left side, did a great job of creating the hole for Jeff Wright to score the touchdown. Right there, look at the job Gaucher does on the linebacker, Tyler Lawrence. Watch number 88 again. Draw the stalemate and get Tyler Lawrence back on his heels. Covington created the seam on the outside and Wright took it into the end zone. 10 plays, 54 yards, the extra point is up and good. And Georgia Tech, with a couple of scoring drives here in the fourth quarter, has taken an eight-point lead. It's 21-13. You know, that touchdown play was a perfect example, Jack, of how a running back and his blockers can work together to make a play work, because Wright really helped set it up himself. Well, you hear people talk in football all the time, well, this guy's got 4-5 speed, this guy's got 4-3 speed. Sometimes it's better in how you handle that speed and where you are moving on the football field that is more significant than how fast you can run in a straight line in a 40-yard sprint. And Jeff Wright, the freshman, picking up with the injury early in the ball game to T.J. Edwards, the fatigue factor on William Bell. We talked about it being a day of attrition and which club would be deeper during the course of the game as the difference in this football game. The Georgia Tech defense has shut down NC State's offense They've not scored a touchdown on offense. The lone score on, in terms of touchdown points came on the fumble recovery and return by Snake Vincent. It'll be system to kick off. Turner and George are deep. Ten plays, four minutes and three seconds, and the real capper for Tech was that they got the ball in the end zone, did not have to settle for three. Right at the goal line. George to the 20 falls across the 20 to the 22-yard line. Now keep in mind that a touchdown and a two-point conversion by NC State would tie up this football game. So the Wolfpack is not necessarily in a situation where they have to score twice. Let's go down to the field and Mike Hogwood. Well, guys, I'm sure uh, upstairs, well down the field, the Jeff Wrights look pretty impressive, and he's been the real find here for Georgia Tech today. Looked pretty good in the spring game, but was listed as the number three back coming into today's game. He's, been, he's turned a lot of coaches' heads, and they've all been giving him congratulations on the sidelines. And congratulations to you for hanging in there. We've got a new quarterback as Terry Jordan throws the pass to the tight end, Harrison, who makes the catch. Harrison out near the 29-yard line. Well, they go with the two-minute offense, and Jordan, who threw for 78 yards last week, is going to have to try and bring him down the field with his throwing arm here. Jordan, with some pressure, runs away from it. Still looking, and no place to go down. He goes at the 22. He slipped. Jarrell Williams was there, number 45, but there simply, Jack, was nobody open. Well, he 
tried to buy some time and find Ricky Turner. The problem was it was Turner against the world because there were about four other Georgia Tech players in the area. And you can see Jordan trying to get him to break free. And that's a turf slip again on a hot day that you get a turf slip because of the warmer weather, the very hot weather, you're more apt to have a problem with your footing than you would on a day when the temperature would be in the 60s or 70s. The ball is back at the 23-yard line. It's going to be third down and nine yards to go. There's the timeout story. NC State is down to one. Tech with a couple left, and they've got to hang on defensively here on third and nine. A lot of talk, a lot of enthusiasm, and maybe, Jack, some very high expectations for the Yellow Jackets. They're talking about finishing in the upper echelon. They're talking about a possible bowl team. They won seven out of eight to close out last year. They had gone 16 straight games in the ACC without a victory. But Bobby Ross got his team going last year. They finished at four and three in the ACC. Certainly had a lot of momentum at the end of the year. For NC State, it was a great start last year. They went 6-0 and then tailed off at the end. Third down and nine. Straight back is Jordan. Incomplete. It will be fourth down. It was intended for Bobby Jurgens. Rudolph Coleman, or excuse me, Coleman Rudolph applying the pressure. This would have been a tough catch by Bobby Jurgens, but he had it in his hands, outstretched, just couldn't quite put it away. And Willie Clay made sure that Jurgens did not come down with the football, and Bobby a little shaken up, and NC State will have to punt it away, and with one timeout left, they're not going to have much of a chance to stop the clock against Georgia Tech. Willie Clay is back in single safety to receive the kick of Tom Mews who started well, but he's tailed off. His last couple of punts, not nearly as good as his earlier ones. This one, a spinning kick to Tex, a bounce for Tech. It's fielded at the 44-yard line. Ryan Schultz downed it. It's only a 33-yard kick. The Yellow Jacket fans responding here. This was a big football game. We talked about the high expectations of this team, John but you have to do it out on the field against a different ball club. And that's one of the things that Bobby Ross talked about yesterday. Yes, he would like to have had a non-conference game to find out a little more about his football team, but he did not have that luxury. He knew they'd have to come out here on a hot day and show what they could do against a very tough opponent. Bell is back in there at tailback now. Wright doing most of the playing at tailback on the last couple of series. Here's Bell. They string it out. And down he goes, right along the line of scrimmage, maybe a half a yard. Mark Thomas knocked him down. On the carry for Tech, number 36, William Bell. NC State will have one timeout left. More than likely, they'll use that in a third down situation, even either after second down or immediately after the completion of the third down play. They cannot afford to stop it, and with 15 on the huddle clock right now, there will be probably less than 30 or 40 seconds by the time we get to fourth down. 21-13, Georgia Tech trying to hang on to the lead and use up what's left of that clock. Scott stays inbound, works his way out to the 48. Fernandez Vincent made the tackle. One minute remaining in the game. It'll be third and six, but that is immaterial for Dick Sheridan and the Wolfpack because that clock that continues to roll is the problem. They will not have to snap the ball till there is less than 30 seconds to play. Neither team able to score in the third quarter, but Tech coming alive in the fourth quarter to score twice. Leading by eight, and it's inside 30. Bell down at the line of scrimmage. Mark Thomas made the tackle. And now the clock is stopped with 21 seconds to play. Well, you're into a fourth down punting situation. NC State has had good ability through the years under Dick Sheridan with blocking punts. And they will hopefully 
at least in the minds of Wolfpack fans, be able to come up with a block punt here to keep their hopes alive, but that's about their last hope. 21 seconds to go, and if the punt by Sisson, or by Aldridge, excuse me, gets away cleanly, an awful lot of field to cover in very little time. For Dick Sheridan and the Wolfpack, they had the lead most of the day going up in the first quarter on a 24-yard Hartman field goal, made it 3-0. In the second quarter then, Snake Vincent picking up that fumble, taking it into the end zone for a 10-0 lead. Jones responded, leading his team on an 80-yard march, a 23-yard touchdown pass to Lester, cut it to 10-7, and then before halftime, 2-14 to play in the second quarter, Hartman again from 38, and it was 13-7 at halftime, it was still 13-7 going into the fourth quarter, and that's when Tech came alive, an 85-yard march capped by the pass to Bell, eight-yard touchdown play at the 16-yard line, Straightened up as he gets to the 22 is George. 10 seconds remaining in the game. They'll stop the clock. And then, of course, Jeff Wright with 2.49 to go, scoring on the nine-yard run to push Bobby Ross, the Georgia Tech, out to a 21-13 lead, and there are 10 seconds remaining. It'll be a tired but happy Tech locker room and a tired and not-so-happy trip home for NC State. We will see the Wolfpack next week as they host Wake Forest in Raleigh. 12 noon is the start time for that one. 10 seconds left here. Jordan, long, long throw. Some blue shirts there defensively. It is tipped and incomplete. Swilling was back there. Marlon Williams had gotten deep on the play, almost came up with the interception. A great finish to 89 has turned into a good start in 1990 for Georgia Tech and head coach Bobby Ross. There's the final score. Georgia Tech with 14 points in the fourth quarter has come away with an eight-point victory, 21 to 13. We are not finished in Atlanta. A lot more to go. We'll have some post-game interviews, all the stats and comments when we return. ACC football has been brought to you by Coors Light, the one that won't slow you down. The Silver Bullet is the right beer now. By the airline of ACC country, Delta. We love to fly, and it shows. By the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. For insurance and financial services, better call JP. And by Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. We're back live in Atlanta, Georgia, where Georgia Tech has just won its opening game of the season over the Wolfpack of NC State, standing here with a very happy Bobby Ross. Coach, congratulations. Thank you, Mike. It, well, I knew it would be just like this. It was a very tough game. you, you got to give NC State a lot of credit. They played very hard, and I think we did too. And I was really pleased with the character that we showed. We got behind. Things weren't going well, but we hung in there and won the game. Two things. Number one, your defense in the second half. You gave up some points in the first half, and you had some turnovers. The defense got put in a bad situation at times. But, boy, did they really rise up in the second half. I thought our defense played well the whole game. You know, the first ten points they got, you know, we gave them the first, on the first fumble of the game. They got three out of that, and then they picked up the fumble and went in one. I thought our defense played super the whole game, Mike. On offense, you were coming in here without Edwards, Bell, Wright, really picked up a lot of the slack and ran the ball exceptionally well for you today. They did. We think they're good backs. They just they haven't played much and they just needed to get a game under their belt. I think it was a good game. It needed to be tough. It needed to be hot. That'll really help them. You know, in the past, you've started the ACC season and you've had to look uphill a little bit. So and to get off to a start like this, to win this first ball game, it's a big ACC game. Just what does it mean to Georgia Tech and your program here? Well, it's not downhill, Mike. I can tell you that. <laughs> I think what it means is that we just, we've won one. We're going to stay very focused one game at a time and take it that way the whole season. All right, Bobby Ross, congratulations. Your first win of the season. Let's go back upstairs right now to Jack and John. 
All right, Mike, thank you very, very much. It has been a long, hot afternoon, but a happy finish for Georgia Tech as they do keep it going. They've now won seven in a row in this stadium. 21 to 13 is the final score, and they won the ball game despite, as I'm joined upstairs by Jack Corrigan once again, despite the fact, Jack, that they really were not able to take advantage of a lot of the opportunities they had. They had some chances. They got the football in good spots. They got the turnovers and didn't cash them in, but when they needed to, it seemed like they got the drives and they got things going at the right time. Well, we talked about the day being one of attrition and as the heat took its toll and the turnovers were a, a direct result of the heat I feel I think the significance of this victory and the way they won in the fourth quarter shows you how the Georgia Tech program has changed during the Bobby Ross era they now have the depth of personnel that they can go to a Jeff Wright late in the ball game a fresh pair of legs that can go out there and get the job done for Georgia Tech they have fresh linemen on both sides of the football with the ability to shut down the opposition and to create the holes on offense I think this was a total program victory for Georgia Tech it speaks a lot for where they have gone over the past couple of years a total program victory but time for us to salute the players we think did the best jobs today some individuals are Schick MVPs go to Tyler Lawrence of NC State he was terrific Jeremiah McClary for Georgia Tech and as part of the Schick Most Valuable Player Award Scholarship Program Schick will donate $1,000 to the Atlantic Coast Conference to be distributed among the member institutions under a conference approved plan the Schick Slim Twin Disposable Razor it reaches every place on every face and let's go downstairs. Mike is standing by with Ken Swilling. Michael. Well, thanks, guys. And, of course, Ken, the All-American candidate, the real leader on this defensive football team. You've got to be one proud football player today. Well, yeah, well, you know, we're very proud. I, I'm proud of my teammates, and I'm proud of myself. You know, we came out and we worked through the heat. It was very hot out on the field today, and uh, we uh, did some things that, uh, you know, we did some things that we uh, didn't do last year. We substituted a lot, and um, that was good for the people up front. It was good for myself because it gave me a chance to get a breather, and it gave me a chance to, uh, you know, just to recollect myself and um, come on and play harder. I know, I just standing down here, It was the, the heat was excruciating just to stand on the sidelines. What was it like in there today? It was it, it was hot. It, it was really hot. Um, you know, it, there come t sometimes when you just have to dig down deep and go for what you know, really. And um, sometimes you just have your own instincts, and that's where it was out there today. And I'm, I just thank God that we came away with the victory because, you know, in, in weather like this, you, you think about cramps. And, um, you know, I don't think anybody caught cramps too much. Uh, but, um, you know, everybody did a good job and did what they were supposed to do. And, um, and allowed us to come away with the W. You know, all games are important as you go through the course of the season. You guys finished off so strong one year ago, but to get that first win under your belt on the first Saturday of your season has to mean an awful lot to you. Well, yes, it means a lot to, um, to me, and it means a lot to our ball, to our ball club. It gives us a, uh, added confidence. You know, we already had confidence coming to the game, but I can still feel a little doubt in our minds, you know, whether we could win, whether we could carry on the winning tradition that we, start, we started on last year um, with the home games. And, um, you know, just coming out and winning today really gave us a lot of confidence and uh, hopefully we'll uh, continue to win. Well, Ken, good luck to you this season. Uh, I know you're going to have a great one and congratulations on the big win today. Thank you. All right. Now we're going to bring in here one of the running backs, William Bell. Congratulations to you. You know, you, you guys had to step up a little bit with TJ being hurt and you picked up the slack and especially in the second half, really controlled the football. Yes, uh, the offensive line did great. Receivers blocked downfield and, um, and the defense just did a a superb job. They didn't give up any points, really. You know, just three. They didn't give up a touchdown. Tell me about that touchdown play. Well, <laughs> all I know is that I came around and it just opened up. And no, I, okay, I, they came on a uh, they came on a um, blitz or something, and I was free. You know, I was just open, wide wide open, and Sean just laid it up there. Six, all I had to do was catch it. Six very important points. Well, congratulations to you today. A fine football game uh, on the entire offense and uh, a real team victory today for Georgia Tech. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. A couple of the players here who are awfully happy and excited about their first win of this 1990 season. Let's go back upstairs. Jack and John. All right, thank you very much. We're going to check out some stats. A chance for me to thank uh, Ginger Little John and Joel Alderman for helping us upstairs. And there are the final stats unofficially as we have totaled them out. And Georgia Tech coming back in that rushing category, doing a good job. Uh, passing wasn't really a factor here today. Well, you stop and consider what Georgia Tech's numbers were on the ground in the first half. They did not run the ball all that well in the first half. Had just 36 yards, so 135 yards on the ground in the second half, particularly in that fourth quarter. And, of course, the turnover factor. NC State threw two interceptions. They fumbled three times. They also had a punt block 
although Georgia Tech was not able to take advantage of most of those turnovers, John, they did negate any kind of continuity that NC State wanted to get on offense. And just over 40,000 on hand to see this one at Bobby Dodd Stadium, Grant Field. 46,000 is capacity and a great start considering the fact that school is closed here and they get it off on the right foot. Now it's time for the option play of the game brought to you by option great coverage for men, the advanced way to get rid of the gray. With the game still on the line, 14 to 13, late in the ball game, Jeff Wright, the young redshirt freshman tailback, and we're having a little bit of a machine problem. Now we've got it Must going. Be the heat. Yes, <laughs> turn the corner. Good blocking right there, number 88, Derek Gauche, and number 17, Tom Covington. The two tight ends clearing the way for the freshman tailback to put it into the end zone. That was the clincher as Georgia Tech goes on to win its first game of the year, 21 to 13. 21-13 is the final, and Tech did it with 14 points in the fourth quarter. They pull it out 21-13. We'll have more from Atlanta. First, a word from your local stations. once again is 21 to 13 Georgia Tech the victor today over North Carolina State and they stay hot they've won their last six in this field they took seven out of eight to close last season and kind of the downslide continues for the Wolfpack they lost their last four last year and they did not play very well toward the end of the season well we went through that at the start of our broadcast this afternoon the fact that not only did they have some guys graduate but they lost some more people Anthony Barber is gone Chris Quarters is gone Scott Adele is gone for various reasons Chris Williams is not in the lineup so there were a lot of changes that Dick Sheridan had to make in the offseason even though he knew about it you're still making the changes and of course he had to hope that Charles Davenport could step up and replace the conference quarterback in Shane Montgomery and you're going to go through the process and do unfortunately we talked about Georgia Tech opening up against uh, a conference team to begin the season it's no easier for the Wolfpack of NC State to begin the year against one of the contenders and I think you had NC State and Georgia Tech here this afternoon and Clemson and Virginia going to take place uh, within the hour those are the four favorites in the conference this year I'll be surprised if we have an undefeated conference champion so it's a situation where for the Wolfpack it's a tough way to start in the conference but a long way to go well they've got to regroup and we will see them regroup next week at home as Wake Forest goes to NC State we will televise that game also starting at noon and let's go back down below once again and I think if we have to give out an MVP award yes. we do to Mike as well because Mike Hogwood is hung in all day down below how you doing Mike oh man I'll tell you I'm, I'm hot but it, it, it has been an exciting game and it was exciting to watch uh, kind of the birth of a few new stars in the ACC if you will one of them Tyler Lawrence number 58 for NC State as you said he played a great game today and remember he was a backup he was not a starter in this game played the whole game virtually because Corey Edmonds and Billy Ray Haynes, two other linebackers, went down. And that now becomes a real weak spot for NC State, something we'll have to watch next week to see if those two are able to come back and play. Tyler Lawrence is from Greensboro, North Carolina, played on two state high school championship teams, and uh, really was disappointed last year when uh, he didn't get to play very much, and or didn't play at all, and he was redshirted and had to sit out, but the, the weight paid off because today is, uh, for NC State, I think he really started making a name for himself and is off to a great career at NC State, and he'll be fun to watch as his career progresses over the next four seasons for the Wolfpack. We'd hope to talk to Dick Sheridan about the game down here, but he is still uh, in the locker room talking to his players and if he comes out in the next moment or two we'll certainly uh, try to grab him and get him on the air for you all right mike thank you very very much we are going to check some other scores from around the country and keeping in mind what is happening here it is pitt in the fourth quarter leading bc and the panthers are playing at home right number 17 in the country that's not really a surprise there swerve and curvin right but here's the surprise yeah. is west virginia had trouble last week with Kent State at home, and now they've got Maryland at home, and that touchdown pass from Scott Zolak to Barry Johnson holding up so far in the third quarter. The Terrapins trying to knock off West Virginia. How about Tennessee, ranked number eight in the country, fourth quarter, a big lead over Mississippi State? Even without Chuck Webb, they are still playing very, very well for Johnny Majors in 1990. Elsewhere on the scoreboard, the uh, Penn State Nittany Lions, 21 in the country, and they are being upset at home by the Texas Longhorns. Dave McWilliams has had his problems getting that Texas program back to its former glories. That would be a major upset. 
and a Navy leading Richmond in the third quarter. 14 to 10 is the score there as the midshipmen try to get off right, leading 14 to 10. Number 10, Nebraska being extended a little bit by Northern Illinois. Again. That's right. It's <laughs> been uh, uh, deja vu for Nebraska in that situation, but you got to believe the Cornhuskers will pull away in that one before it's all over. Jack mentioned what is coming up in the ACC, Clemson and Virginia. That game will start at 4 o'clock. You saw what was happening between Maryland and West Virginia. Duke is off this week, and tonight a couple of games. North Carolina 1-0 takes on South Carolina, and also tonight it'll be Wake Forest 0-1 at home against Appalachian State. 21-13 is the final here. Georgia Tech over NC State. We've got more to go. J.P. Sports coverage of the ACC continues in a minute. Biggest crowd for an opening game here in Atlanta since 1984, and they went home happy because Georgia Tech defeats North Carolina State 21 to 13. A lot of turnovers in this football game. It seemed like it was one way and then the other. This is a turnover that led to a touchdown. The fumble on the hit there, it's picked up by number two, Snake Vinson. He picks it up, spins into the end zone, that touchdown for Georgia Tech. And Georgia Tech had the lead. His touchdown early in the second quarter made it 10 to nothing. But that kind of got Tech going because they got fired up and marched 80 yards for a score. The capper, the pass from Sean Jones to the wide receiver, Lester. Greg Lester makes a great play there to get away from Joe Johnson, who was called for interference on the play, and then just manages to get into the end zone ahead of Jesse Campbell. That cut the gap to 10-7. to A field goal by NC State made it 13-7, and we were that way, John, until early in the fourth quarter. And this was Bell. Getting outside, or excuse me, this is Wright taking it into the touchdown. It is Wright with a nine-yard touchdown that made it 21-13. Bell had caught a touchdown pass of eight yards to make it 14-13. That gave them the lead for the first time in the ball game. The final is 21-13. One more break, and we'll be back to Atlanta in a minute. Twenty-one thirteen, the final tech with 14 points in the fourth quarter to win their opening game of the 1990 season and it was as expected a dandy here in a very red hot Atlanta Georgia this afternoon and the chance for us to remind you that the executive producer of ACC football is Jimmy Rayburn Steve Craddock produced today's game the director was Dave Burchette our associate producer is Beverly Rumley network coordinator Tony Johnson Technical Director Terry DeCarlis, our graphics producer Ken Neal, and the rest of an outstanding JP Sports crew. We will see you next Saturday at 12 noon. We'll be in Carter, Finley, and Raleigh, Wake Forest, and NC State. A chance to see if the Wolfpack can bounce back from this afternoon's loss. JP Sports personnel outfitted by Champion Sportswear. Contribute to your favorite local ACC school by renting from Budget, the official car and truck rental company of the ACC. Remember to call Budget for details. Once again, 21-13 is the final. My thanks to Jack Corden and Mike Hogwood. I'm John Sanders. You've been watching JP Sports exclusive coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference football.